uh, your district and we have a small district just uh, OCS St. Frederick Cedar Creek and, and Lincoln Prep the only those four teams in the district so uh, if you look at the the records of the schools within our district this is I guess in in a sense the the district championship for both teams uh, tonight now if you look at St. Fred's schedule their two losses one of them came to Gina who we we're very familiar with and they they did a number on us in the Bayou Jam we had some difficulty moving the ball we had some difficulty stopping them. Now, it was just a half, uh, you know, a half of a game of football, but they scored 22 points in a half uh, against us, and uh, there hasn't been a team that scored more than 14 points against us this whole season. Gina was able to shut out the Warriors, uh, I think, like 30 to nothing. Their other loss came to a 4A school in Franklin Parish, so a team that's going to put the ball in the air, but they did score 30 points on Franklin Parish. So their two losses, their three and two, their two losses are against some, uh, some, some good teams, and, and I would say that Gina's a really good team um, so we'll kind of see where all that stands tonight when we match up uh, against them and then district play starts from here on out uh, so definitely a game that both that both teams are, are going to take very seriously tonight all right so you know coach robinson's put together a game plan for washita christian i can guarantee you coach stephen Fitzhugh, offensive coordinator drew the dream they, they've got an attack plan tonight they they've got what they think they're going to need to win this football game but do they really know what it's going to take to, to win this game? Because I know who knows how we're going to win this game. And the only way you're going to find out is with Daniel's ways we win. Yeah, so definitely uh, we've got the ways to win tonight. And, and here's number one, and I'm with you 100%. I don't, I don't remember if we were on air when you said that, but we're going to throw the ball. I think we got to throw the ball tonight. And here's why. Tate Hamby, Jet Hudnall on the outside. Two tall, strong, fast receivers that I don't think anybody can match up with, not only in our district, but in our division. Nobody well, has two guys and, that and can cover those guys. the last time I guys. checked, Zach White can catch the football. Well, Zach White can catch the football. Dylan but Dugan it, can catch the football. It, it, uh, it, we got we even got so, Yeah, even so, there's not guys that can cover Jet and Tate at the same time. I just don't see that happening. So, I think we ought to look at that tonight. Luke's th Luke threw the ball really well last week, 12 of 16 for around 260 uh, yards. So, his best game as a, as a starting quarterback, I expect that to grow and to flourish our passing game tonight. So, I think we have a, uh, a, dis uh, a, a specific matchup problem. Uh, there. The set th second thing on defense, they're going to come out with a quarterback who likes to run. They like to run sideline to sideline. Their, their quarterback and their running back have a similar type of running style where they like to get outside. Now, if we contain them, that, that's not going to be a, a problem for tonight. So we want to contain them, force them back to the middle where we have help. And the good thing is we have a fast defense that can pick up those tackles when they're when they're turned back. And again, I'm going to say it, and I guess, you know, this is kind of taking the, uh, the easy way out, but keep your eyes on Tate Hamby with the return game tonight. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, every time I see him get get the ball kicked to him or you see him re re uh, re receive a punt, I mean, at any moment, I mean, you're talking about a guy with the kind of speed and, uh, and I guess, field presence yeah. that it takes to uh, to take something to the house. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think it's going to be any shock or surprise Game changer right for there. anybody out here to see Tate Handy take one to the house. But uh, the Eagles getting ready to make their way onto the field. St. Frederick's already on the field. We're about six minutes away from kickoff we're in the uh, middle of the cowbells tonight dude oh yeah i mean we're, in, we're we're right here man listen the, the farm bureau broadcast booth <laughs> will travel it, 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 it will travel it is traveling tonight so now the eagles making their way onto the field not really sure here at st frederick how uh how we're going to see the uh, the the uh, the invocation as well as the national anthem looks like Daniel that we're going to have the coin toss prior to both as the officials are getting the captains for both teams rounded up as they get ready to make their way out to midfield. Well, Cap and as soon as I said that, oh, they're going to pray. We're going to have the prayer and the, and the national anthem. We're going to take a break from here at St. Frederick High School. You're listening to Washita Christian Eagle football on the Washita Christian Sports Network. Dreyer Contracting has been walked on and driven on all over town for five decades. Dreyer Contracting has been serving our community for over 50 years. That's a lot of asphalt. Surface treatments, hot mix, parking lots, driveways, asphalt maintenance, dozer work, and crushed stone. You can walk and drive on us with confidence. Call 281-2242. Dreyer Contracting in Bastrop. 
there's no better time to get rid of those glasses or contacts. Now with the latest in LASIK, all laser eye LASIK, safe and ultra precise. Call for a free evaluation. 318-32-LASER. 318-32-LASER. Make the height of all decisions. Are you tired of pushing through the pain? Do you struggle day in and day out with simple tasks? Are you ready for change? If so, call Louisiana Pain Care. At Louisiana Pain Care, our doctors are board certified and fellowship trained to target the source of your pain and help you manage it. Visit LAPainCare.com for more information and to schedule your appointment. Louisiana Pain Care, your spine care experts. If your car or truck is broken down, or you locked your keys in your vehicle, or you just need a flat fix, call Bears Towing and Recovery at 388-3021. In fact, why not just save the number in your cell phone? That's 388-3021. Bears Towing is on call 24 hours a day and 7 days a week. They understand that an emergency doesn't happen at convenient times. Bears Towing, 388-3021. Bears Towing is a proud sponsor of OCS Football. Hi, I'm Dustin Balance with Ludwig Marine here on Darbone Lake 110 Old Highway 15 in Farmerville, Louisiana. We have all your needs to have a great day on the water. From bass fishing, we carry a full line of products and services. Come check out our impressive lineup of Ranger bass boats, pontoon boats, and aluminum boats as well. Give me a call today, 318-368-8922. Ludwig Marine would like to say, Go Eagles! Hey sports fans, this is Ashton Smith with Shelter Insurance. We are a local agency that specializes in providing the best coverages and service for our clients. We offer all your insurance needs such as auto, home, life, and commercial. We would love the opportunity to earn your business. Please call us at 318-343-3582. You can find us at Facebook or at 205 Old Bastrop Road in Monroe. We are your shield. We are your shelter. Welcome back inside the Farm Bureau broadcast booth brought to you by agents Chris Thomas and Tanner Baggett. Chip Luffy Field on the campus of St. Frederick High School, Monroe, Louisiana, where the Washita Christian Eagles are making a quick trip down to St. Frederick. Let's go down to the sideline and check in with Nick White and the Marion State Bank sideline report for tonight's coin toss. All right, guys, we're going we're gonna to turn it over to them uh, at this point. Tails. I'm going to flip it and let it hit the ground. What's your call? Tails. He calls tails. It never fails. It is tails. You win the toss. <laughs> oh, okay. You know why tails <laughs> never right. fails? Blue right here. I don't even right know right if we've here. lost a coin toss this year. I don't think. I don't think so. I think you're All right. right. There I you go. So. Tails never, never fails. It there. never D fails. Cutter. Absolutely. We, we defer. We deferred. We have and deferred to okay. the second half. Yes. Th nice. Thanks a lot, Nick. Nick White with the Marion State Bank sideline report. The Eagles win tonight's coin toss. Going to defer. So the Eagles are going to kick the ball off to St. Frederick and give the Warriors an opportunity to try and put points on the board. Eagles again coming over to St. Frederick tonight in the traveling whites, white jerseys, green pants, and, of course, the traditional Washita Christian gold helmet. As we mentioned earlier, St. Frederick is uh, wearing blue pants, royal blue, black jerseys with white helmets. The field here at St. Frederick High School, Coach Robinson and his group, well, they've done a really good job of having this thing prepared for play tonight. And we got a little breeze that he's kicking with tonight. Not a guy on our roster to tangle up with early in the game. Probably staying away from number 33. Yeah, that's a guy. That's not a guy you pick on. Defensive have tried, defenses have tried to pick on him for four years, and uh, you know he's on pace to break the the all-time tackle record here. Um, looks great out there tonight. Look forward to watching him play. First down and ten for St. Frederick. They'll spot this football at the Warrior 20-yard line. St. Frederick, Daniel, well, they wouldn't send us a roster this week. We can see their numbers, though. <laughs> we can see their numbers, and so that's what we're going to give you. And they're going to keep this one on the ground with number one. He's their quarterback. He's run out of bounds, 10 yards. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah, that's a big game. He's, he's going to pick up 18 yards on the carry. Uh, got the edge and was able to scamper down the sideline. So it is going to be a first down and 10 for the Warriors. 
They'll mark this at the Warrior 38-yard line. First down and 10. Well, there, there's where we lost contain. Jet Hudnall's on this side, and he, he stepped up, tried to contain him. The quarterback runs around him and gets down the sideline, able to pick up big yards. First down on their first play. First and 10 for the Warriors. An eye backfield behind their quarterback. They're going to run the toss to their tailback, and he's going to get hit and run out of bounds. Got to tell you, their, their tailback is pretty quick mm -hmm. as he picked up one yard on the play, but he's really small. Yeah. That time you were seeing Ben just kind of grab him and hold him. And just got him out of bounds there. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I mean, as long as you can get a hold of him, it's going to be a tough thing for St. Fredericks to move the, move, the, move the ball. Gain of one yard on the play, second down and nine for St. Frederick. 11 minutes and 20 seconds into tonight's contest. No score for St. Frederick. Their quarterback, number one, is in the shotgun. Again, no roster made available to us by St. Frederick. Number one's going to yeah. kick himself, and he's, he's going to get hammered. He lost yards. Lost nice two on the play. It's going to take away the one-yard gain on first. It's going to set up third down and 11 for St. Frederick. They'll put this football at their own 37-yard line. The Warriors line up in a two-tight end set. Uh, put both their receivers on the near side, and uh, the quarterback just takes it and tries to find some room over the middle, and there was no room there. Maddox King meets him and is able to bring him down behind the line of scrimmage. Penetration in the middle of the play as well, Dan. It looked like... Uh, Looks like Stacy Shaw getting yep. in there a little bit. Lee Messenger also getting good penetration that time. Just, just when you get that penetration and you create that pinch point, it just creates avenues for other guys to make plays. I wish you could have heard Reed's uh, uh, message today at the pep rally. It was great. Third down and 11. First third down of the night. Warriors traveling from left to right from our vantage point. They send a man in motion. Number one looks to throw. He's feeling some pressure. Oh! oh. oh. Stacy. Good gravy. Oh. Two yards. That's going to be a sack for Stacy Shaw. I'm going to tell you something. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, great penetration yep. by the Eagle defense. Fending the quarterback inside, and there was Stacy waiting on him. Hey, if you try to spin away from Ben Duvall and meet Stacy and uh, Stacy Shaw, Shaw, you're in a bad spot. I'll go ahead and tell you. Fourth down, Ooh. 13. The Warriors didn't get anything going that time. They're going to have to punt this to probably the most dangerous team man around here. And that one's going to travel out of bounds. Great job that time by the Eagle punt coverage. As that time you saw Parker Payne run into the punter. But instead of knocking him down, he grabs him and holds him and won't let him fall. That's right. And, uh, and, and there was an official right there next to him. That's right. Got the flag in his pocket. So uh, not a great punt. Punt kind of came off the edge. Well, Parker almost blocked it. You could, say, got the piece you could say a not great punt. You could say terrible punt. Uh, yeah, or you could say smart choice not kicking it to Andy there. The punt covers 27 yards. No return. Eagles' first offensive series of the night. Eagles traveling from right to left from our vantage point. No score here at Luffy Field, 951. Looks like they're going to play man to man on Tate Handy. Luke's going to get the snap from center, keeps us around the ground. Zach. Zach's going to call some dogs for some favorite. Oh my goodness. Zach White is a very difficult player to tackle. He, he is. I think he could have ran around that guy, but he opts to lower his shoulder and put him into the ground and keep going. Unbelievable. Gain of 21 yards on the play, and that's going to be more than enough for our community pharmacy first down. First down and 10 for the Eagles in Warrior territory at the St. Frederick 42. Nine minutes and 32 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. No score at St. Frederick. The dream in the shotgun, an eye beside him in the gun. Turns, going to give this one to Zach again. This time Zach's met at the line of scrimmage. Pretty good penetration by that Warrior defense as Zach will pick up one. Going to bring up second down and nine. Yeah, not a lot of room there for Zach as he tries to uh, to find some space up the middle. Um, several and several St. Fred defenders bring him down. Second down and nine. For number 19, Luke Vadreen, the sophomore quarterback for Washita Christian. Going to send Tate Handy to his left. Patrick Turpin to his right. White's going to join him in the shotgun. Good snap from center. Looks to throw. Puts the man to this one. And that one's overthrown. 
Yeah, I think that was a um, uh, that, uh, Luke was kind of rushed into a throw year uh, on that play. Tate didn't quite get downfield where he was going. There was some pressure on Luke. He had to get rid of the ball real quick. It's going to be incomplete. First pass play of the night for the Eagles. The guy here on the legs is Zach White. 26 yard run. It was actually pretty good defense by the Warriors. Number 11 is Garden Tate. Actually gave him a cushion that time, so he was able to stay over the top of, of, of Tate, and that allowed the defensive line to get pressure on Luke Jr. Third down and eight. Good snap from center. Turns. Faked it to Zach. Kept face himself mask. had a face mask. No flag. No flag. Uh, Eagles will go for it here on fourth and short. No flag on the face mask, and I got to tell you, it probably could have been close to a first down, maybe. I, I don't know. I guess they're going to measure this. Gain of eight yards on the play. Needed eight for the first down, but yeah. it, looks, it looks a little short to me. But well, we got to go to Donnie. Donnie's got a better vantage point. Donnie's saying he's... So it's going, to, it's going to be fourth down and one, but they're going to measure this. Maybe you guys are both wrong. I don't know. Yeah, it's, maybe. Got to take a look at it. Yeah, the nice thing. run that time by Luke Vadreen. Tough run inside. Yeah. Yeah, that's two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah. yeah. Little, we'll see. It's gonna be. It's gonna be one. I got a feeling the Eagles are gonna go for this. I think they're one. gonna go for it too. No need to try to kick a 50-yard field goal right here. Go ahead and go for it. You can get one yard. Give the ball to Zach. Pick up your one yard. Also, we've got a play that we hadn't ran much this year. The old steady in the saddle. Well, the Warriors haven't seen it so far tonight. That's for sure. Maybe checking into it right now. The dream in the shotgun. Two receivers right, one left. Turns, hands this one to Zach. Oh, oh he got Zach it. Zach got it. Second, Second third, yeah. fourth after. Yeah. Gain of two yards, needed one. First down, lost to Tal Christian. He got he held up. First down and all first downs brought to you by the fine folks. The community pharmacy. He got held up on his first attempt there, able to wiggle out and pick up an extra you know three why? yards. Because he's that white Because he's strong. Because he's yeah. so strong. What a great run that time. By the senior tailback, running back Zach White, as we needed one, picked up two, and that's going to keep this drive alive. One pass play so far as part of this drive. First down and 10 for the Eagles at the Warrior 31-yard line. The dream and the shotgun. Two running backs join him in the gun. Turns, play action, looks to throw. He got handy. He's going to be incomplete. Now. Had to fit that one into a pretty tight window that time. Zipped it into tape, but boy, well covered. Heavy traffic in there in the middle of the field. Yeah, also in the backfield there, good penetration by the St. Fred's defensive line there, right in right in Vadreen's face as he tries to throw that ball. Not a terrible throw, but like you said, just not a lot of room to make anything happen there. Second down and 10 for the Eagles. Ball at the St. Fred 31. Seven minutes and 43 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. No score at Luffy Field. The drain calls for it. Going to give this one to Zach. He's got some running room. He's inside the 10. He's inside the 5. Touchdown. Washita Christian. Number 11, Zach White is going to take it in from 31 yards out and put the Eagles on the board. Good blocking on the edge by the offensive line. Tight end, picks up a block. Zach's able to find room on the outside. Take it in. There wasn't any contact until at the very end when he high steps over a St. Fred's defender and finishes into the end zone. Now would be tackler. Yeah. That's right. Eagles put points on the board. Gavin Polk on to attempt the extra point for the Eagles. Oh. No, stop, Gavin. <laughs> So the extra point attempt is going to be no good. No good. 56 in a row. Comes to an end. I don't know what happened there. It looked like he kicked the top of the ball. It didn't get over the uh, the line. I don't know if it was the hold or, or he just uh, mis-kicked mis it. I guess that's what you call it when you don't kick it right. 
miss hit the kick, and uh, yeah, the ball doesn't even make it over the line of scrimmage. So hey, let's just say this too, no excuses, but yeah. hey, probably the first time he's kicked off a grass and a pretty good line. It's not the same. I know that. It's not the same. Like you said, no excuses. It's not the same. So the Eagles do have a six nothing lead, and apart from that extra point attempt, the rest of this game has gone the way the Eagles want it to. They're able to um, to be physical in their first offensive possession. St. Fred starts off with the first down and then goes the next three plays and have to punt um, without picking up anything. So hopefully the, this this will continue and open up the rest of the offensive playbook for the Eagles. Zach White touchdown brought to you by the fine folks at Trinity Diamonds Direct. For all your diamond needs, visit their store located on Blanchard Street in West Monroe. As uh, Zach able to put points on the board from 31 yards out. Gavin Polk going to tee this one up at the 40-yard line. Last kick traveled into the end zone. Gets his leg into this one, and that one is hit really well. Oh, yeah. Oh. Pretty close to the end zone. Stay in your lanes. Pretty good return. Yeah, number three for the Warriors doing a nice job with the return as he gets run out of bounds. Looks like Noah Lovelady and a couple of additional leaders gain the 26 yards on the return. And it's going to be a first down and 10 for St. Frederick. Second possession of the night for the Warriors. Actually, they're marking the back. Just a little bit shy of our vantage point. Looks like he got run out of bounds here, but may have stepped out a little early. It's going to be first down and 10 for St. Frederick. Ball at their own 30-yard line. They're trading in this game. Washita Christian, 6. St. Frederick, 0. With 7 minutes and 28 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Second possession of the night for St. Frederick. Last time, Daniel, they were able to get a first down on first down and then three and out. Number one calls for the ball. Boy, how do you The Ford bunch. Yep, that was Aiden Eldridge coming from the strong safety position uh, on a blitz, able to hit the running back in the backfield for a big loss. And what you're going to see, David, it looks like the Warriors are trying to find room on the outside to pick up yards. At that time, not able to get there. That's, yeah, our defense is pretty fast. Uh, especially up the middle. I mean, you got to watch out. Loss of four yards on the play is going to bring up second down and 14. And back the Warriors up to the own 25-yard line. Warriors come out with four receivers, single running back. Number one calls for the ball. Uh-oh. Oh, He's feeling some pressure. He's feeling pressure by Ben Duval. He's going to throw this yeah. one for nobody. Smart decision by the quarterback there. He was in, he was in, some, uh, he was in some danger there. Absolutely. And one thing that I noticed about that, our defense tonight is Zach White's been playing safety to start the games, but tonight it's, it's Tate Hamby and Patrick Turpin is playing the other side um, uh, cornerback with, along with Jet Hudnall on, on this side. Big third down for the Warriors. Again, we want to apologize to, uh, to anybody tuning in. We don't have names. The, uh, the Warriors uh, would not provide a roster for tonight's game, so you know, we just have to go by the numbers. It's going to be third down and 15. Number one is going to lose the middle on this snap, and he's going to do the smart thing and fall on it. He's going to lose a bundle of if yardage. If you're a St. Fred's Warrior, this possession is a disaster. That snap went about 20 yards. Uh, they, Donnie will have the number. What, what we got? 19 yards. 19 yards behind the line of scrimmage and uh, the quarterback. Uh, well, you know what? Here's, here's what Donnie does. He, he gets us the yard is lost, but he's immediately back with the pencil to find out that it's now four. And 31. Yeah, that's right. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. A correction. Fourth and 33. Don't want to give up those two yards. A uh, low punt right here. Uh, this is going to travel, and this is going to check up for the Warriors. And that's going to give the Washtenaw Christian Eagles unbelievable field position to start this drive. It looks like they'll mark it first down at 10 at the Warriors 35-yard line. Yeah, they're in plus-plus territory here and uh, in good shape. Great defensive stand uh, by the Eagles, and, of course, the Warriors not making it any better on themselves with the, uh, the bad snap there. Punt covers 35 yards, no return, and... I'm going to take up for St. Frederick's punter right now because you probably yeah, yeah. There, there's probably somebody saying, whatever you do, don't kick it to Tate Hamby. Well, that's right. And, you know, make sure you catch his snap because you're in the back of the end zone there. First down and 10 for Washita Christian. Luke Vadrine is going to send Turner in motion. Turns, hands this one to Zach. Zach's got some more running room. Why not? Wow, well, what a strong stiff arm as he gets run out of bounds on the far side of the field. 
Nice run that time by the senior running back, Zach White. He picks up eight yards. Going to bring up second down and two for the Eagles. Five minutes and 51 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. Washita Christian six, St. Frederick zero. Yeah, you mentioned uh, the pass attempts, only two pass attempts tonight, both falling incomplete. Good coverage by the Warriors, but they're going to have to, if they want to change the momentum of this game, they're going to have to do something to slow Zach White down. Second down and two for the Eagles. Ball at the Warrior, 28-yard line. Luke Vadreen in the shotgun. White joins him in the gun. Going to send Turner in motion. Turns and looks to throw. Quick throw out in the flat to Turner. He's going to turn this one up, and he's going to have more than enough for another community pharmacy first down. Well executed play that time, Daniels. They picked up four yards, and that's going to be enough for another community pharmacy first down. Well thrown football by Luke. Hit Turner in stride on kind of the swing route, able to square his shoulders, get up field, and pick up a nice first down. Yeah, John John Larkin Turner doesn't get a lot of credit for his uh, what he does. Him and, and Dugan will play at that B-back position. Really good blocker, both of them. Also, both of them have really good hands and know the route tree really well. First down to 10 for Washita Christian at the St. Frederick 24. Turner in motion, call for the ball, turn, hands this one inside to Zach. Makes one man miss, makes two men oh, miss. Oh my goodness. Skips and hurdles one more before he's run out of bounds. Uh, nice tough run inside by Zach White. And look, we're gonna give Zach a lot of credit because well, credit's due, right? It is. But I tell you what, that offensive line is opening up some really nice holes for him. They are, and Zach White uh, broke two tackles on that play. One, just running through an arm tackle two with a shifty move uh, to leave the defender behind. Uh, just a really good run. Offense, a running game especially, is clicking tonight. Gain of 17 yards on the play. It's going to be first and goal for the Eagles at the Warriors' seven-yard line. Luke Vadreen with three receivers wide to his right, one to his left. Now he's going to send Hamby in motion, fakes the speed sweep, keeps this one inside, and Luke with a nice tough run, smart tough run, picks up four yards, Looks like they'll spot this one at the three-yard line, maybe the two, where it's going to be second and goal at the three-yard line. Actually, it is the two-yard line. Yes, it's, it's, it's down there. Second and goal at the two. The Dream is going to send two receivers wide to his right, one to his left is Hamby. Zach White, the lone running back with him in the shotgun. Calls for the ball, gives this one to Zach. Yeah, gonna have to wait on the officials here. They're gonna, they're gonna call it a gain of one, so it's gonna be third and goal at the one yard line. Yeah, it looks like the official is right on the one yard line. Uh, just a, uh, an old school play, just hand it off to Zach, let him run right up the middle, and a good job by the Warriors to make a stand on that first down, second down play, sorry about that. Third down and goal, four minutes and three seconds left to play in the first quarter. Washita Christian six, St. Frederick zero. Eagles knocking at the door. Third and goal at the one. Luke Vadreen in the shotgun. Two receivers to his right, one to his left. Turns, hands this one to Zach. No, he's going to keep it and he'll go in for the touchdown. Luke Vadreen from one yards out is going to put some points on the board. That touchdown and all Eagle touchdowns brought to you by Trinity Diamonds Direct. Yeah, great decision by Luke Vadreen there to hold on to it. Goes in untouched. Uh, not, not extremely difficult to get the touchdown there on third and one. All right, so yeah. Gavin's trotting back out. You know what this is? Yeah. Got to start a new streak. That's right. Go, go one for one and then worry about two whenever we score again. Good snap. Good hold. Hey, make the form. That one's pretty. Yep. Splits the uprights. Going to give Washington Christian the lead. The Eagles are going to take the lead 13 to nothing. I want to thank tonight's first quarter sponsor, the Darren Dugan Agency. For all your home, auto, life, and business insurance needs, call Darren Dugan today, 318-807. That's 318-807-2100. That's 318-807-2100. Again, we want to thank uh, the Darren Dugan Agency. Darren's been uh, been, a, been a part of sponsoring these broadcasts, Daniel, for, for quite a while now. And a uh, proud supporter of Washita Christian Eagle football. Let's go down to the sideline and check in with Nick White. Nick, how you doing down there? Hey, do, doing good. And, Daniel, um, 
you know, you're the only one with the full, uh, full voice tonight. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we're, we're uh, David and I are both both kind of kind of kind of raspy. Good, good to see a nice snap. I think what happened on the first uh, PAT attempt was it, it was it was a little bit of a, a, a rough snap, and, and you don't want to do that. But hey, no better way start start a new streak. Uh, sophomore, you know, we, we can go from there as we uh, we have the kickoff going uh, right here. All right, thanks a lot, Nick. Nick White with the Marion State Bank sideline report. Number three for the Warriors is going to bring this one back. A lot of a lot of running. Yeah, yeah, but, but not a bad return. I think they're going to spot this at the 25-yard line. Yeah, and uh, number three for the for the Warriors, he's fast. You know, once he gets to the outside, he picks up uh, yards, but. He caught, he caught that kick. I mean, Gavin's doing a great job on kickoffs tonight. He caught that around the one, the same place as last time. Um, our coverage needs to get down there and, and tackle him. But, you know, not bad at 24, 25-yard line. Gain of 22 yards on the return. Third possession of the night for St. Frederick. One first down on the evening. Number one brings the Warriors to the line. It's in the shotgun. Number three is going to join him. Good snap from center. Looks to throw, feels the pressure. And uh -oh. the Eagles are closing oh, yeah. in. Oh, no, 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 no. You've got to be kidding me. Who was he throwing that to? There, there was nobody in the area. That was uh, desperation, and the official is going to let it slide. Wow. I mean, okay. <laughs> Noah Lovelady's breathing down your neck, though. Good gracious. Well, no, I'm not I, saying I wouldn't have thrown it to I don't even know where he came either, from, by I mean, the how, way. I, uh. But, yes, that that's definitely should be intentional grounding. I'm not even sure the ball made it back to the line of scrimmage. Um, but, you know, it was just thrown out of bounds. All right, so here we go. Second down and 10. The Warriors still looking for a way to move the football. They're going to keep the, keep this one on the ground. Oh, the no. oh my goodness. That door slammed quickly. Well, guess who? Yeah, no love lady there. But outside of him, you had Jet Hudnall and Tate Hamby on the outside. You know, it looked for a minute like there was going to be some room, but then you saw those three guys closing in, and you knew uh, not, not much was going to come from that play. Loss of two yards on the play is going to bring up third down and 12. Three minutes left to play here in the first quarter. Washita Christian, 13. St. Frederick, zero. Big third down, I would say. Uh, for the if you, for the Warriors, yes. You go down 20 points here. And you're, deep, you're in your own territory, and deep in your own territory. Third and 12, number one in the shotgun, number three will join him. Four receivers. He's going to look to throw, put some air into this one, and that was not in the same area code yeah. as his intended receiver. It's going to bring up fourth down and 12, and St. Frederick's going to have to punt. Mm -hmm. Three possessions, three punts. Intended for number 25. I thought it was odd. He never even turned around and looked for the ball, made an adjustment to the ball or anything. The ball was thrown very wide, uh, but but not on the same page, obviously, there on that play. Now you got to give the Hamby ball. Tate Hamby is going to drift deep. He'll put his heels at his own 40-yard line. St. Frederick's punter, is well, he's not had a stellar night tonight. Now, of course, like you said, could be very intentional making sure that we keep the ball away from him at all costs. And that's what's going to happen yeah, here, but boy, that, that may is not even make it past bad. the first down. Where are they going to mark this, Dave? Well, let's see just how generous the officials are tonight. Oh, my. Well. Gonna... Hold on, where's he going? What? What? That's insane. Uh, well, the ball goes out of bounds at around the 35 yard line. Bounces around the 40-yard pylon, which is 10 yards off of the field, and somehow they mark it at the 47-yard line. I guess it's where it bounces back onto the field when somebody throws it back. I don't know. One one official was marking it around the 30-yard line, so that's a that's a 17-yard difference. It's pretty unbelievable. That, uh, that's uh, pretty 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 poor officiating. But anyway, yeah. it's going to be first down and 10 for the Eagles. With a 13-point lead, Luke Vadrine's going to step up. He's going to get hit from behind, and he's going to be sacked. As I think Luke was trying to buy a little time with his legs, he's going to lose one yard on the play. So it's going to bring up second down and 11. Well, every time that Luke's dropped back to pass, he's getting pressure, okay? 
every time they're handing the ball, handing the ball to Zach, he's picking up yards. So hopefully uh, our running game will unlock our passing game, but we're having a hard time uh, completing passes right now. Second down and 11 for the Eagles. Minute 57 left to play here in the first quarter. Washita Christian 13, St. Frederick zero. The dream. Uh oh. Uh, a little miscue in the backfield. Luke's going to take a shot. shot. All right, so you got third down here and long. Of course, if you're the St. Frederick defense, that's exactly what you want to do is put the Eagles in third and long. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Third and long, what do you like? Uh, I mean, I like throwing the ball up, let number 13 make a play, obviously. But, but he has to have some time. Luke has to have some time right here to let the route develop. The routes have not had time to develop so far tonight. Third down and 12. Ball at the Warrior 49. Steps up and throws this one. He's got this one complete to Turpin. Turpin tried to make one man miss, and unfortunately, he couldn't do it. And we've seen that a couple, a couple times over the past one. few weeks. It looks like the Eagles are going to send the punt team out. Yeah, when I mean, you're on the St. Fred's side of the field, just uh, you know, just keep your eyes on Gavin here. We've tried one fake punt this year. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if we try it one more time here, especially the way our defense is playing. Oh, no. Well. That, uh, that snap hit Gavin Polk in the face. It did. It went right through his hands, hit him, hit him in the face mask. And so that gives the Warriors really good field position. A couple of special teams miscues early in this contest tonight. Yep. And I got to tell you, I'm not so sure I wouldn't have gone for that one. But, you know, maybe uh, best field position so far tonight for the Warriors. Well, the field position can be attributed to a terrible spot by the by the officials. It really was. Um, it was, I mean, it was unbelievable. But it was still first and 10. You got to pick up your first down. Absolutely. So it is going to be first down and 10 for St. Frederick. Number one is, uh, I don't know if we got a confusion on the formation, but the Warriors are going to take a timeout, and we're going to take one with them. You're listening to Washita Christian Eagle Football on the Washita Christian Sports Network. Trinity Diamonds Direct, 201 Blanchard Street in West Monroe. Wholesale jewelry with integrity. They provide honest, professional experience while offering stunning diamonds and fine jewelry at or below wholesale prices. And we do custom pieces by appointment. Engagement rings, tennis bracelets, pearls, earrings, necklaces, gemstones, loose diamonds, and jewelry repairs. Trinity Diamonds Direct, 201 Blanchard Street in West Monroe. At Veros Creative, we're experts at websites for small businesses. From website creation to on-page photography and videography, we've got you covered. And with single-page sites starting at only $500 and multi-page sites starting at $1,500, we're a low-cost, high-reward option that will have you up and running in under two weeks. Visit us at Veros Creative today to get started. That's V-E-R-O-S creative.com. Veros Creative is a proud sponsor of OCS Football. Welcome back inside the Farm Bureau broadcast booth. First down and 10 for St. Frederick. Yeah, first down and 10 didn't work out much better than any of the other plays uh -huh. have so far tonight. Second down and 10. Donnie gave him a yard because the officials did. I'm not sure how he picked it up, but yeah. it is going to be a gain of one. So it's going to be second down and nine. And that is going to bring it in to the first quarter of play. And we're going to go down to the sideline and check in with Nick White in a Marion State Bank sideline report. How you doing down there, Nick? Well, now, now <laughs> I'm starting I'm starting to get wet. Oh, no. uh, I did not bring uh, rain gear. And you, you guys can see. <laughs> I see David give me the thumbs up. Uh, I, you, you guys can see the, uh, the umbrella starting to come out. Uh, it, it is starting to rain here, but uh, doing good. You know, I, I, th I think it is a little bit concerning with, with some of the snap issues and some of the things going on as far as, you know, special teams go. But, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, th this, this Eagle team is, is clearly in control right now, and now it's a matter, and, and you guys are absolutely right because 
I, I, I watched that punt. Oh, and, my goodness. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I could tell you where, where it went out of bounds at the 37-yard line is where it should have been spotted at. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, here we go. And uh, it is starting to rain a little bit, but uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we're going to have uh, too much of an issue. If so, I'll be coming up and joining you guys under the tent. Thanks a lot, Nick. Nick White with the Marion State Bank Sideline Report. Second down and nine for the Warriors. Ball at the Eagle, 44-yard line. Going to hand this one to number one. He's got nowhere to go. Now he's going to look to throw. He does. And the Warriors are going to pick up. Uh, well, they're going to pick up a nice chunk of yardage on what actually had to be some, somewhat of a busted play. Yeah, it was. Uh, the quarterback rolls out, number one. Uh, breaks the tackle and slides even further deep and throws it out to number, I think it was number 15, um, right around the line of scrimmage, but able to make a couple moves and pick up the Warriors' second first down of the night. First down and 10 for St. Frederick at the Eagle 25. 11 minutes and 39 seconds left to play here in the second quarter. Washita Christian 13, St. Frederick 0. Number one, going to go under center. Looks to throw, and he does. Eagles are there in a hurry. Pretty minimal gain on first down that time. Depends on where they spot this one. Gain of one yard on the play, so not a whole lot happening with the forward pass that time. It's going to bring up second down and nine at the Eagle 24-yard line. Really good coverage. Good decision by Parker Payne, who plays the rover position. Had a chance to go after the quarterback, but he, instead he stays with his man and is able to, to, to bring him down after that one-yard game. Number one goes back to the shotgun. Two receivers to his left. One running back with him in the backfield is number three. Turns, hands this one off to number three. And he's going to, mm, I don't know. That's got to be a loss. It, it Donnie's like going to say he lost a yard, so it's going to put him back at the original line of scrimmage. Big third down play for St. Frederick. Deepest penetration of the night. Yeah, really good pursuit by the Eagles defense there, bringing number three down right at, uh, right behind the, uh, the line of scrimmage. Um, just not a lot of room uh, running the ball out of that shotgun formation. Third down and 10 at the Eagle 25. I really wish we had a roster with their names on it. Number one in the gun. Number three joins him. Two receivers left, one right. Number three is going to drift in motion. Empty backfield. Eagles come with pressure. Uh, Number one is going to be sacked. Yep. Yeah, Decided to turn that one up a little too late. So the Warriors with an interesting decision here. I don't know what their kicking situation is. But I also, uh, also don't know if I would think. Number one in the backfield. Not from center. Bentley with some pressure. Oh, oh there he is again. Goodness. They have to do better than that. They are. Uh, that's Ryder Bentley right there coming in and playing a little defensive line for the Eagles. We've seen that a good bit this year. I talked to his dad on the coaches show this week, Coach Randall Bentley, and we talked about the amount of defense that, that Ryder's been playing, doing a fantastic job, and there he picks up a big time sack on number one, the quarterback. Loss the of seven yards on the play, and that's gonna that's gonna be a change of possession. The Eagles will take over on downs. And this Eagle offense struggled yeah. on our last series. First down and 10 for the Eagles. Ball at their own 31-yard line. Two receivers. Split to our side. One to the far side. Two running backs. Or actually, one running back and a receiver. A flag. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We're going to call a delay of game against the Eagles. Okay. That's so our this, first, first so penalty of the night. Yeah, so this drive's going to get started with a five-yard penalty. Eagles' last two drives haven't haven't started off stellar. No, nope, no. Nope. You just got to execute right here. Uh, you know, the, the bad spots and the things like that, don't let that get in your head if you're the Eagles' offense. Just execute your game plan. Good snap from center. Luke looks to throw, and he does. He throws this one to Hamby, yes. and Hamby's going to be wrestled down in the backfield. Going to be a big loss on that play as well. Well, Take Gabe ground to, uh, to make the reception. And uh, he's going to lose six yards. So five-yard penalty, six-yard loss. You're going to be looking at second down now at 21. 
Yeah, just a bubble screen to Tate right there, but Luke's drifting back, throwing off his back foot. The ball hangs in the air for a long time on a pretty long throw, and Tate with, not, with nowhere to go after he makes the catch. Tate, Second it, down and 21 for the Eagles. Ball now at their own 20-yard line. Vadreen in the shotgun. Calls for the snap. Looks to throw. Puts some air into oh this my one. Goodness. And that one's going to be way over the head of his intended receiver, Tate Hamby. And that's going to bring up now a big difference here. Third and 21 for the Eagles. Started the drive off with a uh, delay of game, followed by a big loss on a screenplay. Now you find yourself in a bind. All right, they're going to hand the ball. Luke's going to keep it. Keep this one on the ground. Luke Vadreen with the quarterback keeper. Uh, unfortunately, nice run that time by Luke, but Daniel, he needed 21 yards for the first down. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to bring up, uh, bring up fourth down and 11, and the Eagles are going to have to punt this football as uh, rain kind of coming down now it a little is, bit here at Chip Luffy Field. I want to say this. We, uh, the, the visitor stands are packed tonight. I mean, the Eagle faithful came out, and, and they're packed. And now they're all making adjustments with umbrellas, moving cameras into the uh, into the, into our tent here. Was, uh, that might be a pretty good punt. Yeah, Gavin gets his leg into that one. It's a nice one. It's going to definitely flip the field as this one's going to drift down about the 31-yard line of St. Frederick as they'll start their next drive at their own 31-yard line. Seven minutes and 29 seconds. Left to play here in the second quarter. Washita Christian 13, St. Frederick 0. Punt travels 37 yards, no return. First down and 10, well, they'll actually move this one to the Warrior 32. This Eagle defense has stymied St. Frederick tonight. They have found no solution to how to block them up front. The running game has been tough. The passing yards have been even tougher. Be interesting to see, Daniel, the, the, the stats as far as sacks and loss of yardage plays. First down and 10 for the Warriors. Number one's going to uh -oh. keep this one on the ground. Going to make one oh, nice miss, tackle. but Jet. Jet Hudnall comes up from his cornerback position to, uh, to make the play, and he does. Yeah, that was Small a gain on the play, and it's going to bring up now, let's see, uh, trying to, trying to like meander our way through here. It's going to be eight. gain of two. So it is going to be second down and eight. Yeah, really nice open field tackle by that uh, by Jet there, number one. Uh, makes a couple moves. Looks like he might find some room around Jet, and Jet steps up and makes a really nice form tackle, as they say. Second down and eight. Ball at the Warrior, 34-yard line. Two receivers split wide to the right, one to the left for number one. He's oh. going to lose the handle on this one, but he somehow gets it over to his running back who... Oh. Looks like he made it back to the original line of scrimmage, probably. Yeah. Depend on the spot right now. Oh, it's going to be a loss of about two there. Tate Hamby with a nice tackle behind the line of scrimmage. It is going to be a loss of two, and it's going to bring up third down and 12. Actually, Donnie's going to say it's a loss of four. Oh, nice. So third and two, or third and 12. They put this football to Warrior 30-yard line. It is a loss of four yards. Six minutes left to play here in the second quarter. Washita Christian 13. St. Frederick 0. Third down and 12 for the Warriors. One gets a good snap from center. Looks to pass. Nobody's open either. Nobody's open. He's going to have to unload this one. And the closest receiver on that one was a Washita Christian cornerback. Yep. It's going to be incomplete. St. Frederick's going to have to punt again. And this is where it gets hairy for, for the Warriors. You're deep in your own territory. You're putting away to uh, one of the most dynamic punt returners in the area and in OCS history. Seven punt return touchdowns. Well, let me tell you something about returning punts. I, I did it for a few years, and I don't know how good. I definitely went as good as State Hamby is at it, but I'll tell you this. You better have sure hands to catch a punt yep. on a rainy night. Especially looking up into the, the rain falling down your face. It is not a lot of fun. A low line drive, well, this it's is, returnable. But this, this is, is returnable. One is, he handles it. Oh, oh, he's down. Yep. Oh, you said it. Yep. That's a high punt. 
well done and well executed by St. Frederick's punter that time. He struggled all night. He has. That was a good punt, high punt, but it was still returnable. Uh, Tate pulls his eyes off the ball at just the last minute, slides between his hands. No harm. He just kneels down and, and uh, picks the ball up, and the referee blows it dead. Punt's going to cover 37 yards, no return. So the Eagles set up shot first and at their own 33-yard line. This is, I don't know if you can see this on the live stream, but it is like a, a just a sheet of rain. It's not heavy rain, but it's just a steady, constant, more than a mist. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a rain. Nice night for a London no, fall that's, jacket. That's it right, right there, yeah. Vadreen in the shotgun. <laughs> turns, hands this one to Zach. Oh. Now they're going to lose the football. Vadreen's going to get on it. He'll recover it. Yeah. I got a feeling we're probably fixing to shift gears and maybe start, like, uh, maybe running the ball north and south. I, I think so. That was just one of those mesh plays that Vadreen had a hard time making up his mind on whether to give or to pull, and it keeps it in there too long. And uh, pretty much a fumble on the play that, that he falls on. But another loss starting behind the sticks again for the loss third possession. four yards on the play. is going to bring up second down and 14. Vadreen in the shotgun. Sends Turner in motion, turns, hands this one to Zach. Zach's going to step up and uh, meet one of the St. Frederick linebackers in the hole. Gain of two yards on the play. It's going to bring up third down and 12. I don't know if it's the rain, the conditions on the field, the, 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 you know, the ball being slippery, but the last plays on both sides, you know, before the punt, the ball is just uh, players are having to adjust <clears throat> to, to the moisture that's on the field now. Third down and 12 for the Eagles. Four minutes and 28 seconds left to play here in the second quarter. I'm proud of Nick. He's still out there braving the wind. Uh, I don't know how he's doing it. It's, it. it's yeoman's duty at this point. They keep this one on the ground with White. Makes one man miss. Makes another man miss. Breaks a tackle. He's going to drag a warrior with him. He's going to have enough for a first down. Uh, they're saying there's a fumble on the far sideline. Mm. I, I don't – it's hard to see. That's all the way on the other, other side of the field. But no signal from the officials yet. But they're talking about it. You hope that they're saying that he was down by contact before the ball comes out. Well, we're going to wait on the official ruling. It looks like Zach's going to be close to first down yardage if I think they he's mark got the yards. Down. But it's going to depend on whether they give the Eagles possession. That's right. All right, Eagles they retain, are. yep. But it looks like we may be a little short, and I don't Whoa. see the punting unit making its way onto the field. Well, they're moving the sticks. So it's going to be enough for a first down. First down and 10 okay. for the Eagles. They'll put this football at the Eagle 44-yard line. Four minutes left to play here in the second quarter. Tonight's second quarter sponsor, DNH Sporting Goods. Two locations, Bastrop and Sterlington, to serve you. Stop by DNH Sporting Goods for all your Washita Christian Oh, Eagle the snap gear. never came. He got a mix up on the snap yeah. that time. His hand moved, but the ball was like stuck in the ground. I saw that. We were looking right down the line of scrimmage. Drew Mosier goes to, to snap it, and the ball stays where it is. So Eagles will be hit with a false start here. Hand move, but the ball didn't, yeah. and it is going to be illegal. Well, uh, illegal motion yeah. against the Eagles, so it's going to be a five-yard penalty. Fourth, fourth yards. Down. Yards are, are becoming hard yes. to come by. First down and 15 for the Eagles now at their own 39. The drain in the shotgun turns, gives this one to Zach. Zach's got some running room. And he's going to make a couple of Warrior defenders pay on the far side of the field. You just really have a tough time tackling that guy. Yep, yep. He actually has never tackled on that. Forced out of bounds after a pickup of about 10 yards there. It's going to bring up second down and five. Gain of 11 on the play. Three minutes and 52 seconds left to play here in the second quarter. Washita Christian 13. St. Frederick zero. You gotta take a shot at some point. Vadreen in the gun. Two receivers left, one right. Turns, keeps this one on the ground with White. Now he's got some running room. Good he's blocking. gonna have more than enough for a first down. I think he's they good. may catch him. Yep. But but not before he picks up a huge chunk of yardage. 
Looks like they'll run him out of bounds just inside the 10 yard line. Maybe call it the nine. Gain of 40 yards on the play, and that's going to be more than enough for a community pharmacy first down. Good blocking by the offensive line, but good blocking by the receivers downfield, opening up some lanes in the third level for Zach to find and able to finish off that run uh, way down inside the 10 yard line. First and goal at the 10. Zach, Zach's going to come to the sideline and get him a breather. We're in the Washington Agency red zone, right? We are officially. We had, yeah, we hadn't been in there no. much tonight. We're inside the Washington Agency red zone. Our first and goal at the 10. Vadreen in the gun. He's going to call his own number. And I don't know. He may have slipped and slid his way in for a touchdown. 10 yards out. That touchdown brought to you by the fine folks at Trinity Diamonds Direct as Luke takes it in from 10 yards out to add to the Washita Christian lead now. 19 to nothing. Essentially, a uh, he had one man beat, uh, ran ran around the outstretched arms of the, the Warrior defender and, 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 and got the touchdown. Uh, oh, boy, uh, short. I'll tell you what. Gavin has not found the range tonight as that one was kicked. And uh, it, it, it didn't make it to the end zone. <laughs> it didn't. I, I, that's probably going to be one of those ones, D, that you leave off the highlight reel, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Patrick Turpin, the holder, I see him talking to Fitchy right now about the handle that he had on the ball. No question about it. This uh, the, the rain is having an impact on this game. Oh, absolutely. The Eagles enjoying a 19 to nothing lead. Three minutes left to play. You mentioned the rain. Let's go down and talk to Nick White with the Marion State Bank sideline report. He's braving it. Nick, how you doing down there? Uh, uh, I'm soaking wet. <laughs> I'm expecting the rain, I can tell you that much. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Nick. Nick White with the Marion State Bank sideline oh. report. It's going to affect the Warriors special teams yep. too, Daniel. As that kick called in by number three, loses his footing at the 10-yard line. Oh, About it's going to be six. inside the 10-yard line. Six or seven line. yard line. Well, it looked to us that he was down around the six-yard line, but we're going to wait for the official spot. It could be anywhere between there and the 20. Well, there's a guy standing right there. Okay, there it is. It looks uh, like it's on the seven. Okay. So it is going to be first down and 10 for hey. the Warriors at their own seven. I know we've missed two extra points, but as long as our defense keeps playing like they are, you know, extra points are just a bonus. If we keep pushing the ball down the field, getting touchdowns and holding them to three and outs or, or Well, let me tell you something. Okay. With the ball being slippery and the footing a little untrue right now, St. Frederick is in a real dangerous spot down here at the six-yard line. That's right. they got to handle this football and be ball security at, at, at a premium. You lose the handle on it here, it's going to uh, be a touchdown. Yep. Warriors keep this one on the ground. They go right up the middle, and they're – Ball carrier is going to be hit right at the line of scrimmage. Stacy Shaw doing a great time that time. Came up with the football, but probably t probably picked it up a little too late. Looks like may have made it back to the line of scrimmage and no more, as it's going to be a timeout taken by us. How about us, Fitchy? Probably yep. a pretty smart one. And uh, we'll take a quick timeout with him. You're listening to Washita Christian Eagle Football on the Washita Christian Sports Network. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ron Bush is ready to help you combine home and auto and save with two locations to serve you in Bastrop and Sterlington. Call 318-388-4663 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. This is Coach Fitzhugh. Thanks for listening to Washita Christian Football on the OCS Eagle Football Network. And now back to the Farm Bureau broadcast booth. Welcome back inside the Farm Bureau broadcast booth brought to you by agents Chris Thomas and Tanner Baggett. Chip Luffy Field, Washita Christian leading this game, 19 to nothing. Two minutes and 50 seconds left to play here in the second quarter. Warriors with the ball at their own seven-yard line. They keep this one on the oh. ground at number three, and he gets met by a host of Eagle defenders. I think he made it back to the line of scrimmage, Daniel, but uh, eh, wait on the official spot. It looks like he did. So it's going to bring up third down and 10. The Eagles are going to burn another timeout. 
don't know officially. I think that's the second timeout that the Eagles will take and should have one more in the half. So it's actually going to be a uh, looking yeah. at the down marker down there. It's going to be a loss of one yard, so it's going to put it. Well, let's call it the six-yard line where the Warriors will have it third down and 11 at their own six coming out of this timeout. Well, due to the field position, Fitzhugh opts to take a timeout, want to get the ball back with the idea that you'll have good field position with time to score before halftime. I also want to mention Stacey Shaw has been in on just about every single play on defense, playing lights out tonight. And not only in on every play, but probably one of the biggest well, one of the most thunderous hits we've seen oh, out of Stacy goodness. in his career. That was a huge shot earlier, trailing on a uh, cutback play. And, you know, they can't get you for a crackback uh, tackle. No, not when they have the ball. That's right. Third down and 11 for the Warriors. Ball at their own. Let's call it the six-yard line. Number one is going to go under center. Quick snap. Tries to find the edge. Going to unload this oh. one. It's going to go over the outstretched arms of his receiver. Looking for 82 over there. Mm -hmm. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Hey, listen. you got to snap this football into your end zone uh, oh, here. Oh, man. And this could be a party. Yeah. And I've got a feeling we got, well, it looks like we're going to go with punt safe. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So I don't know if they're well, going to come after this one. you got two and a half minutes left. So what you want to do, if you're Tate back here, if they get the punt off, you want to secure the ball. You're not worried about a return right here. Same thing if you're uh, on defense, don't let them fake it or anything crazy. That's a, that's not a good punt. All right. That All has got to be inside the 10-yard line. Well, let's see where they – oh, he did. The oh. official on that side of the field got it right. Yep. It is going to be inside the 10. That punt couldn't have traveled more than four yards. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it looks like they're going to mark it. They haven't marked it over here. It looks like uh, around the nine-yard line. Yeah, so the punt, Well, Donnie's going to officially call the punt three yards from the six to the nine. Where's he going? First down and goal for the Eagles at the Warrior 9. You might as well go for it if you knew that was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> have all come on the ground. We've have, have we, we haven't been able to get the ball going in the air. Of course, that may be due to the weather. Madrine in the gun. Good snap from center. Gives this one to Zach. Zach needles his way He's through. In. Touchdown, Washita Christian. Zach White is going to take that one in from six yards out left. To him. Luke's going to keep it himself. In. Dives inside. And he's in for the two. Yeah, nice run, man. He found a little uh, tunnel there to jump through and, and gets in for the two-point uh, conversion. He is sneaky. He's fast. He's sneaky. Uh, you know, he's got some moves, and he holds on to the football. Absolutely. I think it's worth noting, too, you pointed out an interesting stat to me, and uh, I, I really hadn't thought about this, but we're, we're game six right now, correct? This is game six. All right, so let's go ahead and jinx Luke immediately, okay. right? Yeah, right. why not? 800, uh, well, around 900 yards passing, uh, about 58% completion but, percentage. But the one zero stat you told me, yeah, zero. So, no interceptions. I just, I, I, for a sophomore quarterback to have had the success that he's had so far, and we've thrown the ball a fair amount we have. to have no interceptions, boy, I'll tell you what, that's an interesting stat. Yeah, he's thrown the ball, uh, I, think he, I think he's up to about 70 attempts now on the season and, uh, and, and, and zero picks. On the other side of that, though, our secondary has played really good. We have nine interceptions on the year coming into this game in five games. That's pretty good. Minute and 52 seconds left to play in the half. Eagles lead 27 to nothing. Gavin Polk's going to kick this one for the Eagles. Line drive kick gets his leg into uh, it. It's going to drift the around the five, yep. and that's going to be a low line drive kick. But the Warriors are going to secure it. But, boy, they're going to be in tough oh, field position. Yeah. I bet you Coach Fitzy wishes he had a couple more timeouts here. Yep, they're, they're at the 11-yard line, 10-yard line or so. Great kick that time by Gavin as he really got his leg into it, drove the ball. You mentioned it before it even caromed off the player. That was going to be a hot potato, and that's exactly what it was. Well, not only is it wet, we've got a, a little wind going, and that end over end is going to be moving through the air, and you can, you can see him. Yeah, he was kind of dancing with the ball when it was coming down. First down and 10 for the Warriors at their own, well, it looks like the 6, or the 11, actually. Mm -hmm. Going to be just outside the 10. Minute and 44 seconds left to play here in the half. 
Washita Christian 27, St. Frederick 0. They keep this one on the ground with number three. He's going to be close to a first down. And he's going to be real close. Yep, they're going to move the sticks. Number three pretty excited about that run. Well, you got to be after after you struggle to get in, get moving on the ground. You pick up 10 yards, you know. You hey. stand up and say, hey, that's a first down. Give it to me. There you go. It is a first down. Clock running, a minute 24. Left to play here in the half. Eagles with one timeout remaining. Not sure about the Warriors. They, they, they don't stop the clock after that play, I'll tell you that. Number one in the gun. It's a high snap. Gets it to number three late. Going to be wrestled down by the Eagles. Gain of four yards on the play. Clock running. The Warriors are looking at second and six. Yeah, Maddox they put this King. football at the St. Frederick 25. Maddox King with a nice tackle there. Jet Hudnall with the tackle uh, on the play before. So our linebackers are secondary. Uh, making plays at the second and third level after they get through the line of scrimmage, with the, has not ha which has not happened very much tonight. Second down and six. Ball at the Warrior 25. Clock running with 30 seconds left to play in the half. Number one's going to keep this one himself, and he's probably going to wish he hadn't. Yeah, there's Stacy Shaw again, man. He is all over the place tonight. He's tough in the middle tonight. Yep. 26 seconds, 20 seconds left to play now. In the half. Well, you got to wonder if they're going to, uh, if they're even going to run this play. They look like they're in no hurry. Well, the quarterback looked like he was jogging. Well, maybe he was going over for the play call. Ten seconds. By the time he gets oh, here. Oh, you takes a timeout. Interesting. Yeah. Well, he, he took it at 11 seconds. There's seven seconds left now. And. Yeah. I. <laughs> Hey, you know what? Here's the thing. Coach Fitzhugh burns that time out. You can't take it with you, I guess. Yeah, I yeah. Well, you get a bad snap here. Uh, you, yes. You know, maybe you want him to handle the ball one more but time. But you also have a 27-point lead. You know, Coach Fitzhugh's pointing to the clock saying, just like you did, I caught it with 11 seconds. And, yeah. You know, I got seven left. Let's well. get out of the sideline and Nick White with the Marion State Bank. Sideline report. Nick, are you still dry? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> okay. uh, actually, uh, I'm soaking wet, but that's okay. Uh, no, uh, yeah, uh, he, he, he's battling for a few more seconds, and, and I totally get it. Yeah. You know, you, you just, you know, with the weather and the conditions that are, that are going on right now, you're hoping for a bad snap, and so, uh, but, and Daniel, you nailed it. Like, you, you can't take it with you. Well, so. but you get the ball to start the, the third quarter, right. so, That's oh well. Right. Here you go, last play of the half. Number one's going to turn it, hands it off to number three, and he's got some running room. Coach Fitz, you may regret that time out here in a second, but I don't think so. Well, Eagles are all over him. He's going to run out of bounds with yeah. no time on the clock. Eagles dodge a bullet, and they'll take a 27 to nothing lead in at the half. Good play on the far side of the field. Looked like Turpin actually ran him out of bounds. No time left on the clock here in the second quarter. Washita Christian out in front of St. Frederick, 27 to nothing. And uh, we're going to take a quick break from here at halftime at Luffy Field. Come back and join us for uh, Daniel. I think you're going to have the stats on the first half of play. I will try to get them. All right. Thanks uh, Thanks for tuning in to Washita Christian Eagle football. And I uh, want to welcome, uh, uh, hope that you enjoy halftime here as we take our break. Come back and join us for the third quarter. You're listening to Washita Christian Eagle football on the Washita Christian Sports Network. Road. Our new location offers the same level of customer service you've come to expect at our Monroe store and is stocked with additional brands like Toro and Skag. 3D outdoor equipment, the equipment you need and the service you deserve. Hey sports fans, this is Ashton Smith with Shelter Insurance. We are a local agency that specializes in providing the best coverages and service for our clients. We offer all your insurance needs such as auto, home, life, and commercial. We would love the opportunity to earn your business. Please call us at 318 318- 
343-3582. You can find us at Facebook or at 205 Old Bastrop Road in Monroe. We are your shield. We are your shelter. If your car or truck is broken down, or you locked your keys in your vehicle, or you just need a flat fix, call Bears Towing and Recovery at 388-3021. In fact, why not just save the number in your cell phone? That's 388-3021. Bears Towing is on call 24 hours a day and 7 days a week. They understand that an emergency doesn't happen at convenient times. Bears Towing, 388-3021. Bears Towing is a proud sponsor of OCS Football. Dreyer Contracting has been walked on and driven on all over town for five decades. Dreyer Contracting has been serving our community for over 50 years. That's a lot of asphalt. Surface treatments, hot mix, parking lots, driveways, asphalt maintenance, dozer work, and crushed stone. You can walk and drive on us with confidence. Call 281-2242. Dreyer Contracting in Bastrop. Everyone likes to be on the winning team, but there are always many obstacles in the way. Join us at Forsyth Church of Christ, where we celebrate overcoming the hurdles and struggles of life together. We are a community of faith, supporting each other's victories. Come as you are, and let's tackle life's challenges together. Join us at Forsyth Church of Christ this Sunday at 10 a.m. Visit facoc.org for more information. Go Eagles! Forsyth Family Medical Clinic with Angela Hamby. Here's what patients have to say. Angela is an excellent health care provider. She has knowledge, compassion, and integrity. As a single parent, it's nice to have a medical clinic that makes you feel welcome. Most clinics are just another visit to them. Forsyth Family Medical treats you like family. Make Forsyth Family Medical Clinic with Angela Hamby your home for family health care. 5000 Forsyth Bypass in Monroe. There's no better time to get rid of those glasses or contacts. Now with the latest in LASIK, all laser eye LASIK, safe and ultra precise. Call for a free evaluation, 318-32-LASER, 318-32-LASER. Make the height a more decision for your LASIK care and clear vision. Are you tired of pushing through the pain? Do you struggle day in and day out with simple tasks? Are you ready for change? If so, call Louisiana Pain Care. At Louisiana Pain Care, our doctors are board certified and fellowship trained to target the source of your pain and help you manage it. Visit LAPainCare.com for more information and to schedule your appointment. Louisiana Pain Care, your spine care experts. Hi, I'm Dustin Valance with Ludwig Marine here on Darbone Lake 110 Old Highway 15 in Farmerville, Louisiana. We have all your needs to have a great day on the water. From bass fishing, we carry a full line of products and services. Come check out our impressive lineup of Ranger bass boats, pontoon boats, and aluminum boats as well. Give me a call today, 318-368-8922. Ludwig Marine would like to say, Go Eagles! Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ron Bush is ready to help you combine home and auto and save with two locations to serve you in Bastrop and Sterlington. Call 318-388-4663 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. Trinity Diamonds Direct, 201 Blanchard Street in West Monroe. Wholesale jewelry with integrity. They provide honest, professional experience while offering stunning diamonds and fine jewelry at or below wholesale prices. And we do custom pieces by appointment. Engagement rings, tennis bracelets, pearls, earrings, necklaces, gemstones, loose diamonds, and jewelry repairs. Trinity Diamonds Direct, 201 Blanchard Street in West Monroe. At Veros Creative, we're experts at websites for small businesses. From website creation to on-page photography and videography, we've got you covered. And with single-page sites starting at only $500 and multi-page sites starting at $1,500, we're a low-cost, high-reward option that will have you up and running in under two weeks. Visit us at Veros Creative today to get started. That's V-E-R-O-S creative.com. Veros Creative is a proud sponsor of OCS Football. There comes a time in every dip's life when it's ready to leave the slow cooker, even buffalo chicken dip. So we put juicy chicken, buffalo sauce, and melty cheese in a portable crispy golden shell. Run away, dip. You're free now. Sonic 299 Buffalo Chicken Dip Bites.
St. Frederick. So I think the defense has done a really good job. Um, you know, now you, I, I still think this field is in very good condition, just having been, being down here and, and things like that. Uh, but, you know, it, it's, it's going to be wet, you know, and, and so you're going to have to rotate the footballs in. Uh, that's, go, that's on both sides, too. So that, that's something that you, you've got to pay attention to. But, you know, right now, if, if you, you ask me 27 to nothing at the half, uh, I, I think we'd all take that. Uh, no matter the, the passing stats or the rushing stats, I think we would all we would all take that to to the to the halftime locker room. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Nick. That's Nick White yep. with our Marion State Bank sideline report. And Nick, maybe you can go get you a cup of coffee and and, and warm up a little bit. And uh, so that's it for our Sterlington Physical Therapy halftime report. We're we've got about three and a half minutes. St. Frederick Warriors going through some senior night festivities right now. It seems like we're, we're doing that every week. Last week it was at Washita. So, uh, you know, we're, we're happy to sit here and watch during halftime as long as we stay uh, as dry as we are. And uh, the Eagles have a 27 to nothing lead at a halftime and will receive the ball to begin the third quarter in just a few minutes. So we're going to take a short break and we'll be back for the kickoff of the second half of this football game. You're listening to Washita Christian Football on the OCS Eagle Network. Hey sports fans, this is Ashton Smith with Shelter Insurance. We are a local agency that specializes in providing the best coverages and service for our clients. We offer all your insurance needs such as auto, home, life, and commercial. We would love the opportunity to earn your business. Please call us at 318-343-3582. You can find us at Facebook or at 205 Old Bastrop Road in Monroe. We are your shield. We are your shelter. Trinity Diamonds Direct, 201 Blanchard Street in West Monroe. Wholesale jewelry with integrity. They provide honest, professional experience while offering stunning diamonds and fine jewelry at or below wholesale prices. And we do custom pieces by appointment. Engagement rings, tennis bracelets, pearls, earrings, necklaces, gemstones, loose diamonds, and jewelry repairs. Trinity Diamonds Direct, 201 Blanchard Street in West Monroe. At Barrows Creative, we're experts at websites for small businesses. From website creation to on-page photography and videography, we've got you covered. And with single-page sites starting at only $500 and multi-page sites starting at $1,500, we're a low-cost, high-reward option that will have you up and running in under two weeks. Visit us at Barrows Creative today to get started. That's V-E-R-O-S creative.com. Barrows Creative is a proud sponsor of OCS Football. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ron Bush is ready to help you combine home and auto and save with two locations to serve you in Bastrop and Sterlington. Call 318-388-4663 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. There's a thousand different drink combinations at Sonic. I'm gonna list them one by one. Get ready. Cherry Limeade. Well, it looks like we're out of time. Mmm, Sonic. Everyone likes to be on the winning team, but there are always many obstacles in the way. Join us at Forsyth Church of Christ, where we celebrate overcoming the hurdles and struggles of life together. We are a community of faith, supporting each other's victories. Come as you are, and let's tackle life's challenges together. Join us at Forsyth Church of Christ this Sunday at 10 a.m. Visit facoc.org for more information. Go Eagles! Time for Washita Christian football with David Gordy, Daniel Kirkendall, and Nick Wise. Well, welcome back to Chip Luffy Field, the campus of St. Frederick High School here in Monroe, Louisiana, where the Washita Christian Eagles enjoying a 27 to nothing lead here at Chip Luffy Field as uh, the Eagles. I tell you what, Daniel, uh, one of the things about this year's team that is got to be frustrating for, well, a lot of teams, but tonight the St. Frederick Warriors is, you know, you let off the game with what I thought would have been this, would have been uh, 
I guess the same scenario. In order for the Eagles to really take, uh, to impose their will on the Warriors tonight, they were going to need to be able to throw the ball efficiently and effectively. The Eagles have not been able to do that. I think the conditions have played a little bit of a role in that, but I also think the defense of the St. Frederick Warriors has played a role in that. And I also think that uh, we've just had a tough time getting open uh, and we missed some throws tonight. Yeah, yeah, we did. You know, Luke overshot a couple deep receivers, but you know, here's the thing: when you're running the ball, well, like I was you gonna are, say, right? I yeah. Mean, you let off with it. I would have thought you were spot on with the fact that if we can't well, throw the ball, we're gonna be in trouble. Well, it, it, it was nice to see us throw the ball last week. That was something that uh, when I talked to to Coach Randall Bentley this week, he said, uh, you know, part of that was the development and the growth of Luke Vadrine at quarterback, making good decisions with the ball being accurate with his throws, but also that was something that they pinned on the, the Washita Lions. They said, this is a place that we can attack. And I thought this was a place that we can attack tonight. But I will tell you this, the St. Frederick Warriors did a good job watching video, adjusting, because uh, like we said at the beginning, I just don't think that they can cover in man and pressing on our receivers. And they haven't done that. They've backed off, given them cushions, which has allowed their defensive line to get pressure on Luke Vadrine. And that's work, but... Man, if, you, if, you, if you're giving away 10-plus yards per carry, it doesn't matter if you can throw the ball or not. You know, we, we, I mean, why would you, why would you need, need to throw the ball? You control the clock. Your defense is playing lights out. So, you know, I do want to say that we do lead 27-0. That is our in-game scoreboard update brought to us by Shelter Insurance and Agent Ashton Smith, who do, who's a great insurance agent. So if you need something, give Ashton a call. Absolutely. We, uh, we, we love Miss Smith and uh, Ashton and her group. Uh, proud, proud sponsors and supporters of Washita Christian Eagle football. The Eagles won the coin toss again. They go with uh, they go with tails, and uh, as uh, as uh, as one of uh, one of one of my favorite sideline personalities, uh, defensive coordinator Sonny Vadrine used to say, "Tails never fail." I agree with Coach Vadrine there. I don't know if I've ever called heads in my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you would have tonight. You'd be on the winning, uh, winning, winning end because the Eagles did. They won the coin toss, elected to defer. So with a 27 to nothing lead, we're going to get ready to start the third quarter as the Eagles set to receive. Deep for the Eagles, number 13, Tate Hamby. And they're going to make sure that they don't kick it to Tate Hamby. Well, he had it, but it looked like several of the Warriors' kickoff coverage team uh, left before the ball left. Well... Uh, and, and you really can't blame those guys that time because their kicker took he kind did. of a chop step. Yeah, he did, and he kind of uh, went to his left and then to his right and then approached the ball. So it looked like it threw everybody do off. Do I kick it to Ted Hamby? Do I not kick it to Ted uh, Hamby? What do yeah. I? You know, maybe what a little did Coach indecision. Say do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a little indecision there. Yeah. But uh, they're going to mark off the five yard penalty, and the Warriors are now going to have to kick this one from the 35. <laughs> Eagles lead this contest right now 27 to nothing. Tate Hamby's going to stand at the Eagle 15-yard line as number uh, number 19. And again, we want to apologize to anybody tuning in. We don't, uh, the the St. The, uh, the St. Frederick staff uh, would not provide us with a roster. So we're just going to have to go with, uh, with the numbers tonight. The number 19, uh, Sky kicks this one and the Eagles do a nice job on the return that time. It looks like yep. on the far side of the field is, uh, is number 35. Um, John Turner. Turner's done a nice job, Daniel, this year. Is he's kind of in that spot where people are trying to kick it away from Tate. John does a nice job, typically catching the kick, getting north and south, picking up what he can. A nice tough kickoff return that time, as he puts uh, puts more points on the board. Yeah, the kicker for St. Fred's number 19 understood the assignment after the penalty and kicked it right to uh, John Turner. Gain of 13 yards on the return. First down and 10 for the Eagles as they start the second half with the football at their own 46-yard line. Good great, field position. Great field position. Vadreen in the shotgun. Two receivers to his left, one to his right. Vadreen calls for the ball. They keep it on the ground with guess who? Number 11, Zach oh. White, and guess what? Nothing He's changes. He's making Warrior defenders miss, and arm tackles will not get it done. Nope. And that's going to be more than enough for another community pharmacy first down as White is going to pick up 17 yards on the play. 
into Warrior territory. It looks like they'll put this football at the Warrior 36-yard line, first down and 10 for the Eagles. Yeah, just uh, just a simple handoff. Zach finds the seam. Great job by the offensive line uh, off the left side. That's Ryder Bentley and Landon Ogden. Uh, Drew Moser in there at center. So they just open it up for, for Zach. Um, it looks like he doesn't meet any resistance till about seven or eight yards down the field. And then in Zach White fashion, picks up another seven or eight yards. First down of 10 for the Eagles. Vadreen in the shotgun. Good snap from center. Looks to throw, and he finds White out in the flat. Nice job in tackling in the open field mm -hmm. that time for the Warriors by number 21. Gain of two yards on the play, and that time somebody was uh, – Somebody went to tackling school and figured out, hey, probably don't want to arm tackle Zach. Yeah, that's right. Goes low, uh, tackles Zach around his ankles and brings him down for that two-yard gain, uh, which if you're the St. Fred defense, you're going to say that's a victory. Second down and eight. Ball at the Warrior 35. Opening possession of the second half for the Eagles. 10.47 left to play in the third quarter. Washita Christian 27. St. Frederick zero. Good snap from center. Luke's going to keep this one himself. Pretty good read that time yeah. as he's going to find some yardage. Picks up five yards on the play. Going to set the Eagles up with a very manageable third down here. As it looks like we'll call it third down and four. They'll put this football on. Donnie's going to say three. Yeah, third and three at the Warrior 30. All right, so what do you think, David? I mean, now you're in good field position. You have third and short. Would this be a time that you might look to take a shot to the end zone with Tate? Of course I would. Yep. I like it. By the way, the rain has left the field for a while. Yep. Ball's going to be a little bit drier. I would definitely be looking for Tate Hamby. Good snap from center. Well, they're just going to pick up the first down. You know, just a... Uh, Tate Hamby with a monster game last week. Three catches, 179 yards, three touchdowns, um, and one passing touchdown for 60 yards. Uh, really quiet in the first half uh, tonight. Going to be first down and 10 for the Eagles. Gain of, uh, gain of three on the play. They put this football to Warrior 25-yard line. Well, call it the 26. Vadreen in the gun. Turns, going to hand this one off to Leonard, and Leonard with a burst. He's oh. going to make a couple of, couple of men miss and find his way inside the Washington Agency red zone. A nice run that time by making Leonard. And, you know, it's a really nice thing to see, Daniel. Gain of 17 yards on the play is... Zach can go over to the sideline, get a breather, and you put it in the capable hands of a guy that has got that tremendous speed, speed. Speed to uh, spare, as they say. Yep. Leonard stays in the First game. First down and goal at the eight. Turn, they give this one to Leonard. Leonard is going to have his knee down just shy of the goal line. Looks like a gain of four on the play. Actually, six on the play. Good, strong run by Leonard, and uh, he's going to check out um, with second and goal to go uh, for the Eagles as Zach White comes back into the game. Second and goal at the two. Zach White is going to join Luke Vadreen in the shotgun. Two receivers split wide to the left. One to the right is Hamby. Luke's going to call for the ball. Good snap. Turns, hands this one to Zach, and he's going to pound his way into the end zone for a second touchdown of the night. War, Warrior student section, yeah. reading it with a uh, little confetti. Yeah. Is that touchdown brought to you by the fine folks at Trinity Diamonds Direct? Zach getting it done down inside the Washam Red Zone, Washam Agency Red Zone from the six yard line. Zach just takes a counter step, takes the ball off his left side, and runs uh, runs off the uh, off the left guard, Landon Ogden, for a touchdown. Oh, there we go. Kick's going to be up and good. It's hit or miss on these uh, extra points tonight. And Gavin Polk does a great job that time of splitting the uprights and does <laughs> as the Eagles increase their lead now over St. Frederick, 34 to nothing. Let's go down to the sideline and check in with Nick White. And a Marion State Bank sideline report. Nick, it looks like the skies have parted. 
Yeah, ho hopefully so. <laughs> um, I, it, it doesn't matter because I'm I'm soaking wet. So, uh, but but hey, you know, so so are the players and a lot of the fans. And, and look, the Eagle faithful, they're, they're sticking around. What a great what a great opening drive to start the second half. I mean, you know, just taking it down the field, getting after it. I mean, just a, a phenomenal job keeping the ball on the ground with the field conditions. Just tremendous job of this this Washtenaw Christian offense, and and clearly, clearly in control now, 34 to nothing. Absolutely, As the Eagles are going to put this one into play. Thanks a lot, Nick. Nick White with the Marion State Bank sideline report. Gavin tees this one up at the 40. Gets his leg into it. And that one is going to travel around the 10. Going to be fielded cleanly by number three for the Warriors at the 10-yard line. He'll make one Eagle defender miss before he's run out of bounds. Decent return that time from number three. He's done a good job running mm -hmm. the football and, and on his returns when he's had an opportunity. Unfortunately, he's usually being met in the backfield by one or more Eagle defenders. Had a tough time there tonight. Gain of 16 on the return. So St. Frederick will start this drive first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Warriors unable to get really anything on track in the first half. Like you said, Daniel had one long run there at the end of the half. Other than that, this Eagle defense has been stingy. Yes. Number one goes to work out of the shotgun. <laughs> Good snap from center. They keep it on the ground with three. He's going to get to the outside edge, and he's got some running room. Eagles are going to oh, nice. miss a couple of tackles. And oh. he's going to go for a touchdown. Injects a little life back into the Warrior faithful after that big run, 74-yard scamper. A really good run, too. Well, it looks just like the same play that we saw right before yep. the end of the half, a gain of 44 yards. 74. Our 74 yards mm -hmm. that time for the touchdown. Yeah, it broke a couple tackles there. Um, you know, it's not it's not what we've seen from this Eagle defense. They'll go with the swinging gate on the uh, on, on their extra point attempt here. Nice to see the uh, creativity from the Warriors. They will throw it out of the swinging gate. The, the uh, center is eligible on that. Good snap. Good hold. Looks like oh, the extra got, point is good. He's got some. Uh, they got a kicker. So the Warriors will put a touchdown on the board and now trail 34 to seven. Eagles defense comes over to the sideline visibly frustrated after allowing points. Uh, you know, you have a first half like that. You're, you have your sights set on a shutout and uh, for the second year in a row. Last year, the Eagles had the shutout until the fourth quarter We're in a big run by uh, the running back then. Um, and so now the shutout is, is no more. And so hopefully the Eagles defense will get back on track. Two rushes in a row, um, you know, of, of, I mean, that pushed the ball way down the field going back to the first half. Well, the amount of rushing yards you mentioned, uh, the Eagles were pretty stingy with the exception of the one long run, maybe around 60 yards. Yeah, about 54 yards. And then now you throw this one in, so 128 yards rushing. On two, two carries, yeah, versus 49 yards the rest of the game. Well, it is going to be, uh, it is going to be the first touch that touchdown of the night for St. Frederick. Their kicker, number 19, will tee it up at the 40-yard line. You definitely want to make sure your hands team is on the field. Uh, you know, down 34-7. Be a short approach, that's for sure. Oh, goodness, that's a good kick. Uh, Eagles will field that one cleanly. It'll be taken by one of the upbacks, number 55 for the Eagles. That's Zach. Kelmel. Kelmel. Yeah. Kelmel uh, rotates in on offensive line from time to time, and... Uh, Looks like he can catch the ball, too. Fields that one in the air and falls down with it. That was good coverage by the Eagles. Very uh, very heads-up play by Kel Mel as he'll bring it in, but it's going to be first down and 10 for Washita Christian. Yeah, with a 34-7 lead, be interesting to see if the Eagles try to fly the friendly sky. No, why not? Why not? I mean, I mentioned it earlier. Tate Hammy's been quiet tonight. Negative yards receiving, as a matter of fact, so hopefully we'll see him get involved. First and 10 for the Eagles. They keep this one on the ground with Zach. Good stuff. Zach's going to fight forward for two yards on the play, and that's what he'll pick up. Second and eight for the Eagles. Ball at their own 40-yard line. Clock running now with 3.56 left to play here in the third quarter. Third quarter sponsor, Valerie Van Mathern, attorney at law. Valerie specializes in estate planning and secessions. Call 807. 
918-807-9030. Again, that's 318-807-9030 to schedule your appointment. Vadrain feels oh, some immediate pressure. He's going to elude it. Oh, he's now got, he's got Turpin. Throw, and he's got Turpin on the side of the field. Turpin is going to make one man miss, and he's looking for a blocker. Unable to get it upfield as he cut it back inside. But nonetheless, able to be patient right there on the sideline. Quit moving and give Luke a, 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 a stationary target to throw to. That's what he did. And it looks like we got a penalty marker on the play. Yeah. And why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we? I, I will say this. I don't know what the penalty is. Uh, look, holding on us, I would imagine. No, but, it, I think it's actually an ineligible man uh, downfield. You know, that was a really nice throw on the run, all for nothing. But Luke rolls to his right, makes a good throw downfield as Luke, uh, um, not Luke, Patrick Turpin uh, finds some space. But all that's going to be negated as the Eagles find themselves behind the sticks for uh, second down here. I mean, yes, it'll be second and about 13. No, what? A seven-yard penalty? Maybe, uh, maybe a. Well, I mean, yeah. You would. What would the spot be where he was downfield? That's an interesting ah, penalty. Ah, that's that's. Yeah. Walked off by the. Uh, there's oh, Luke. Oh yeah, the nice the tough shoulder. one inside. Yeah, I don't. Not a fan. I like to see him slide. I like yeah. to see him kind of be <laughs> elusive. I, yeah. I definitely don't like to see him trying to lower the boom on anybody. A gain of nine yards on the play, a nice tough run. But our sophomore quarterback needs to stay healthy. Yep. Well, We've got a we... warrior shaking up on the play, so we'll have a stoppage of play. Let's go down to the sideline and check in with Nick White and the Marion State Bank sideline report. Nicholas, how are you? Uh, doing good. Yeah, you know, one of the things, and, and the clock is stopped at this point, but they, they've been running the clock here, and that, that to me is just, I, I understand it's a, you know, what, 34-7 to 7 ball game at this point, but I've been kind of surprised by that, and I was talking to some people down here on the sideline, and I think we're all kind of surprised by that. We'll take it because yeah. we, we all kind of want to get out of the elements tonight. Uh, and we certainly, you know, hope that, that the young man for, for St. Frederick is okay. But, you know, that, that's kind of one of my takeaways right now is, you know, it's a 27-point ball game, and I'm, I'm just a little bit surprised that they're running the clock at this point. Well, for a running clock, and, and, both and coaches have to you, agree yeah, on it. Yeah, and Daniel, you, you're more well-versed, and, and we were talking down here on the sidelines too – I, I, I do believe there is a rule that was implemented at some point, but I don't believe it was a 34-point no. margin. Is is that correct, I or, think or do you know? I, I think it's 30 points in the fourth quarter. So right. uh, both coaches would have to agree to run the clock in the third quarter. That's my understanding of the rule. That I'll, I'll find out before next week, but yeah. that's my understanding. So that means that, that somebody presented the uh, idea between coaches, and they both agreed to it, which uh, – you know, yeah, if we, you're St. Fred's, why would you want to run the clock? Yeah, I, I, I agree, but, but again, we'll, we'll take it, and the, the clock is, is back to running. But we, we were just trying to figure out what, what the new rule was because I do know they implemented something at some point in time. I just didn't know the margin. Thanks mm -hmm. a lot, Nick. Nick White with the Marion State Bank, sideline report. Third down and six. The dream feels some immediate pressure, Dream. unloads this one to Dugan. Dugan oh. is unable to elude the tackler, and he goes down. Gain of two yards on the play, and it looks like the Eagles have decided to punt this football. Man, he had one. If he would have, if he, if he would have break that one tackle, you know, I thought it was a nice play, nice play call, executed well. Uh, you had one man to beat, and um, unfortunately, the St. Fred's defender. Uh, you got to give credit where it's due, yeah, it right? That's a nice open field tackle by the Warriors. The Eagles are going to have to punt this football with a minute and 44. And we got the fake Love on. Lovelady. That's Noah Lovelady. Oh. He is a man on a mission. He's inside the 30. That's a horse oh, collar tackle. Let's go. That's a horse collar tackle. Out of bounds. How That's are you not throwing a flag real. on that? I'm that usually not critical. How are you not throwing a flag on that? Fits you as I rate, and I do not blame him that one bit. That is unbelievable. This is 
These are some clear calls tonight, Daniel. I mean, uh, just obvious calls that yep. are being missed. Yeah. Flags staying in pockets. I mean, and when you start talking about the health of the players. Oh, my goodness. Drain of 34 yards on the play. Drew Vadreen had to be restrained on the sideline. That was unbelievable. Good job, Noah. Uh, had a great job out of Love Lady that time as he picks up the first down for the Eagles and they go to work. Keep this one on the ground with Zach White. I mean, the official, I, I, good run by Zach, but the official was right there and blatant missed call. Game no of call. four yards on the play. You know, you got pass interference calls, holding calls, that kind of thing. But when you start talking about the health of a young man. A it, late uh, tackle, out of bounds, horse collar, all of it. You know, I, I, I you know, I, the, the, yeah, that's just a, boy, I tell you, that's a, that's a really tough break. And uh, we got a little break in the game here. Let's go down to the sideline and check in with Nick White. I think Nick was right down there where uh, the call was not yeah, made. Yeah, I, I was, and I, I am, and, and, and I, you guys know, like, I am, I am, I try to call it down the middle as you much do. as possible, but, but, I mean, I was literally five yards from that play, and, um, that's pretty bad. There was and, an official and, closer than you. Yeah, yeah, and, and I was pretty close to it as well. So, uh, but but you know, thank, thankfully everybody's okay, and exactly. I think that's. But 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 that was a dangerous situation right there, and, and really 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 surprised uh, there was not a flag, and and I think that you know Coach Padreen, Coach Fitzhugh, uh, they all have uh, every right to be upset about that non-call right there because again it becomes a, a player player uh, health player safety issue right there but thankfully everybody's okay and uh we'll, we'll move on to the fourth quarter absolutely thanks a lot nick white for the marion state sideline report and hey you know daniel in all fairness i mean you know it, these officials are you know for the most part trying to do the best they can but boy i tell you it's a couple of calls tonight that would seem to be from here in the stands just unbelievable. Well, obvious. that one was in the wide open, and I'll tell you, if there's one way you want to fire up the Eagle faithful, <laughs> well, the, let that one slide. Well, that punt earlier hit the oh, bench on the sideline before it carried him back into the playing field. So it is going to be second down and six. Gain of four yards on the play as we get ready to start the fourth quarter. Vadreen in the shotgun. Two receivers to his right. Two running backs with him in the backfield. Luke calls for the ball, looks to throw, no. and that one's going to be low. Intended for Tate Hamby out on the outside. I got to I gotta give credit where credit's due again, Daniel. Good coverage it out there. It was good the coverage. There was Tate. not much there. And it, I know Luke didn't get the ball to him, but, uh, you know, if, if, he, if he completes that pass, Tate's going to get hit immediately if he – uh, if he's able to haul that in. So uh, not, not the worst thing right there, the incomplete pass. Big we're, third down play for Washita Christian. Well, we're in four down territory. No oh, question obviously. about it. It's going to be third down and six. Ball at the Warrior, 18-yard line. Luke Vadreen in the shotgun. Good snap from center. Sets his feet to throw and does. And that one is... Uh, Incomplete. It is incomplete, um, thankfully, because the only person that was there to catch it was a St. Fred's defender. Goes right through his hands. Fourth down right here. And uh, as of now, the offense is staying on the field, and Vadreen's uh, calling a play in. Might be a good time for the old steady in the saddle. Fourth down and six. Five yards with Baya. Yep. Fourth and one. Eagles set up. Two receivers split wide to the right, one to the left. Vadreen in the gun. Zach White joins him in the shotgun. Calls for the ball. Gives this one to Zach. Zach's going to be wrestled down in the backfield. Warriors are going to take over on downs. Going to be a loss on the play, and St. Frederick will take over. Yeah, good observation by Nick, though. The, the clock continues to run, even uh, with the change of possession. Well, it's shut down right now. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Nearing 10 minutes to go in the game. 10 minutes and three seconds on the clock. Washita Christian 34. St. Frederick 7. Number one in the shotgun for St. Frederick. Starts this drive at his own 20. 
Pulls down a high snap. They're going to keep this one on the ground with number three, and he is going to run out of real estate and lose the football. Jet, Jet Hudnall Hudnall. comes up and says howdy. Yep. And knocks the ball loose, but the ball goes out of bounds. Believe it or not, I'm actually going to agree with the spot. <laughs> As it travels out of bounds, it's going to be a loss of six yards on the play. Great pursuit that time by Jet Hudden on what we would call closing speed. As Jet zeroes in and does a great job. Nine minutes and 15 seconds left to play in the game. Washita Christian 34, St. Frederick 7. Snap's going to be hauled in this time, number seven with the football. Hadn't seen a lot out of him tonight. No. Number three and number one primarily carrying the load, but a good run. Number seven, Michael. And you know what you got to do, too? You got to give number seven some kudos yep. for sportsmanship as he goes in and helps Tate Hamby up off the turf. Yeah, pretty tough run. Gain of eight him. yards on the play. Pretty tough run by number seven there. Uh, through the middle of the Eagles defense, gets tackled by several uh, defenders, pops up, and, and like you said, uh, helps Mr. Hamby off the ground. Big loss on the play, turns that eight yard gain into now third and eight. They put the football at the Warrior 23 yard line. Big third down play for St. Frederick to keep this drive going. Eagles show blitz and they come. And uh -oh. This one is, well. Is it grounding? <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be incomplete. and, and I, I, not even really a receiver no, in the vicinity. No, there wasn't anybody within 15 yards of that. It was he wasn't throwing the ball away. Apparently, it was miscommunication, but uh, but there was no threat there. So the Warriors are going to have to punt this football, trailing 34 to seven. Clock running with 7:50 left to play in the ball game. No, nobody's deep for the Eagles yet. We'll see. It looks like Ham uh, Tate Hamby and Aiden Eldridge. Are just going to play safety here. Probably a pretty smart play. Yeah. Yep. Warriors look like they're going to, well, all kinds of confusion uh, they, right they, now for St. Yep. Frederick. Late substitutions. We're going to have a timeout on the field. And I, look, this Washita Christian Eagle football team has got a lot of guys on it that they've been playing football together for a while, right? They do. And you've had a lot of guys that probably started off playing in the the tackle, you know, the flag one, flag two, tackle one, tackle two, and probably in the middle school in JV. And, you know, you start to see the program kind of kind of take shape and take form with, with the amount of guys that we've had coming through the program. And following this punt, we want to go down and talk to Nick. I think a couple of our youth teams, Daniel, maybe the junior high teams, as well as, as some of the other teams this year, have had some pretty good success on the field. And, uh, you know, those young guys are out there with their moms and their dads, and everybody's trying to, you know, find the time to, uh, to get out there for these practices. And it takes a, it's a sacrifice for a lot of folks. So I know Nick uh, participates in some of the youth programs here at Washita Christian. And uh, Nick, I understand uh, we've had a little bit of success in these youth programs yeah, lately. Yeah, real, really, really, really proud, and, and not just because my son is – what was a part of this, but our third and fourth grade Pee Wee, and we, we're, we have implemented the program starting in the third grade, and Daniel's very, very aware of this, you know, with, with all the things that we have going on, but our third and fourth graders in overtime, and I got to tell you, for a third and fourth grade football game, it was as, it, and, and I was in the stands, and I'm not used to that. I'm either calling a game or coaching a game. Uh, it was nerve wracking, but our third and fourth graders, as we, we have the play right here, sorry guys. Um, looks like we got about five yards. I, I can get back to my play-by-play -play roots, roots if I need to. Um, but our, our third and fourth graders defeated Cedar Creek on Tuesday night, uh, 12 to six in overtime uh, to win like our league championship. And you know, our fifth and sixth graders, they did fall on Saturday uh, to a very good Riverfield team. But I love that the fact that we're implementing the system starting in the third grade and you know by the time these guys get up here these kids get up here to this level 
there, there won't be any problems with, with knowing the playbook or anything like that. But really, really proud of them. I think our junior high teams have done very well. Daniel will probably uh, know a little bit more about you know their records and things like that. But just an awesome job. And I love you know how we're implementing, not just in football. Basketball's cranking up here. We got baseball cranking up. You know, all these things, softball, I'm sure, soccer. We have so many different sports, and we're implementing this starting at the third grade level and building programs. And I think that's part of what builds champions as well, and that's what we're all about here. Uh, obviously, champions on and off the field. Thanks a lot, Nick. Nick White with the Marion State Bank sideline report. Macon Leonard getting it done. Picked up five on first down, six on second down. Now the Eagles looking at first down and 10 at midfield, and they go with Turner. John Turner with another tough run, a gain of two yards on the play. It's going to bring up second down and eight. You know, Dave, this, this year I got to watch more junior high football than I have since I played junior high football. My daughter's on the junior eagle line, so I got to sit there and wait till halftime. Wow, but that's awesome. Watching our seventh and eighth grade, uh, our eighth grade finished their season undefeated. Seventh grade uh, finished their season with one loss. So like, like Nick alluded to, I mean, just uh, success uh, from top to bottom with this football uh, program this season. Second down and eight for the Eagles. The dream turns, gonna give this one to Leonard. Leonard with some speed. Whoa, oh, oh Nelly. runs over somebody. Whoa, Nelly. Not going down without a fight. What, what a, a run. tough, tough run by Macon Leonard. I'll tell you what, he's fast. He is. You talk about his speed. Some strength and power. Gain of 20 yards on the play. Yeah, he is fast. Gets to the outside. Meets a defender about 18 yards downfield and lowers the shoulder and just keeps going for several more yards. First down brought to you by the fine folks at Community Pharmacy. First and 10 at the Warrior 24-yard line. Vadreen calls for it, gives this one to Leonard. Leonard is still running hard. Yep. Going to get it just across the 20 inside the Washam Agency red zone. Gain of five on the play. Yeah, nice run again by Leonard. This is a... Uh, this is good to see. You know, Zach's kind of been the, the bell cow for this uh, running back unit, and now Macon comes in against a district opponent is able to pick up some big-time yardage running the ball. Looks good tonight doing that. Second down and five. Ball at the Warrior 19, just inside the Washam Agency red zone. You're starting to see some substitutions for the Eagles. Reed Smalling split wide to the near side. Keep this one on the ground to Turner. And Thank you. Uh, throw, go ahead and throw another one. John Turner almost has his helmet ripped off on the tackle. And I think that was the same player uh, that tackled Noah Lovelady out of bounds earlier. They may wave it off. They wave it off? Well, I mean, you know, come on. They hadn't marked it off yet. Yeah. There we go. Personal foul, uh, yep. face mask going to be a big penalty against the Warriors too down here inside the Washam Agency red zone as they'll mark this one off. Should give the Eagles a great opportunity and it, and well not oh, just short of the first down. <laughs> well the personal foul penalty uh, though, didn't we? Yeah, no automatic first downs but I just uh, I don't understand. I mean You sure about that? Well, now they're moving to the other side. There we go. Because <laughs> I thought we determined that no, but weren't uh -uh. automatic first downs except personal foul. R roughing the passer, roughing the kicker. That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh, okay. So here we go. First down and ten for the Eagles. Ball at the Warrior, 13-yard line. Uh, this chain gang did not really. <laughs> they didn't want to give. They didn't want to give the first down there. Vadreen in the shotgun. Leonard joins him in the gun. Turns, hands this one to Leonard. The oh, yeah. Warriors standing there. Touchdown, Washita Christian. Number three, Macon Leonard is going to take it in from 16 yards out. That touchdown brought to you by the fine folks at Trinity Diamonds Direct as Macon Leonard puts points on the board. Really good nice second run half. That time. Yeah, really good second half here for Macon Leonard, kind of uh, showing his skill set, his speed. And even uh, a, a little of what we haven't seen, his, uh, his ability to run in traffic. Great job. Gavin Polk on to attempt the extra point for the Eagles. 
And Gavin hammers oh, that one. That's going okay. into somebody's backyard yeah. out there. Great job that time. Gavin getting a little more confidence in kicking off this grass. Hey, he's, he's got a, he's got a, he's got a, he's two for his last two. Got a streak going. As the Eagles add to their lead now over St. Frederick, 40 to seven here in the fourth quarter. Actually, 41. 41. As we're here in the fourth quarter, I want to thank tonight's fourth quarter sponsor. When I say tonight's fourth quarter sponsor, always the fourth quarter sponsor, the fine folks at Eagle Point Boat and RV Storage. Eagle Point Boat and RV Storage is located on beautiful Lake Darbone and Farmable. Proud supporter and longtime sponsor of Washita Christian Eagle football. And again, as always, we want to thank the folks at Eagle Point Boat and RV Storage. Gavin's going to tee this one up at the 40-yard line. St. Frederick is in a bind. Minute and 37 seconds left to play. All right, so look. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm looking past St. Frederick officially right now, okay? It's 41-7. to 7. They have no chance of winning this game. I got I to gotta tell you, if you're listening right now, you're an Eagle football fan, and if you are, they got a big one next Friday. Well, a big one next Friday. Let me tell the listeners this. Only one person that I know has watched Harding Academy play live. You're and talking that's you. to him. Yeah, and that's Absolutely. you, David Gordy. You, you, you were up in Searcy, and uh, you found out they were playing in town, and you went to the game. I you, did You go even to told me you were a little distressed that you didn't have any OCS gear to wear to the game, but I know you, you made some friends. I got to tell you, I don't think I would have been accosted by anybody from Harding Academy. No, no. I don't think so. I no. think they're pretty good guys. Well, I will tell you this. Harding Academy is going to bring a ton of fans yep. to the football game. They travel extremely well, and – I will say I will say this. The Harding Academy faithful in Cersei are looking forward to this game. Yeah, and I know the Eagle faithful here are looking forward to it as well. You've told me that they have an explosive offense. Because they do. Because they do. They got a quarterback who can throw it around the field. They uh, you, I'm trying to think of some other things you told me. A lot of motion uh, on the offensive side of the ball, you know, trying to to create uh, openings on the defense and uh, man, it's it's a big game for both teams uh, this late in the season. Well, Harding Academy is going to feature a, uh, I would say the most impressive player is, uh, is a young man named Wyatt Simmons. Simmons is a, uh, a commit to the University of Arkansas. One of the most highly recruited linebackers in the Southeast, in the nation. The quarterback is a senior. Uh, he's a leader. Uh, maybe he's, I think maybe actually I'm, I'm, I'm misspeaking there. I think he's a junior. Very talented thrower. Runs the ball well. I can just tell you this. You're going to see you're going to see two football teams square off against one another that are well disciplined, well coached, and know how to play football. That's right. Championship pedigree next week. So I can tell you this. If you're looking for a good football game next week. It's going to be a good one. Hour and 27 minutes from Washington Christian And I School. got news for you. We're playing at Monticello High School, the home of the Billies. The Billies and, the IE. And if you've had a chance to see the facilities up at Monticello, they are fantastic. Plenty of room, plenty of parking. It's going to be a really nice night for high school football. Weather, if the weather, you know, you know, cooperates. Well, well th th that's right. But here's the thing. After tonight, this Thursday night game, I know how you feel about Thursday night game. They're not your favorite. I don't like them. Yep. Um, but hey, you know what else they have at uh, at Monticello High School? Tell me. They got a press box on the visitor side, oh, so yeah. we're going to be sheltered yeah. from the elements. That's right. That's right. We're going to have, we're going to be able to do that. Uh, you know. Oh, by the way, as we've been talking about next week's game, Washita Christian defeats St. Frederick officially 41 to 7. So the Warriors are going to go down in, I would say, significant fashion to a, well, one of the better Washita Christian football teams I've been around in a long time. These guys are putting something to, putting putting something together pretty special. Hey, uh, well, you know, just with these two teams over the last 20 years. The Eagles are 19 and one against the Warriors, 34 and 11 all time. But just, um, I mean, how else do you say it? Complete dominance uh, with the with the lone loss in the last 20 years coming in 2018. A couple years ago was a kind of a uh, we were down seven to six at halftime. Ended up winning the game 25 to seven. Um, but you know, usually there there is some 
uh, some difficulty when we come here, but the Eagles really no problem tonight. Able to run the ball at will, um, just a kind of impose their will from a physical standpoint on the Warriors. Um, you know, this is a. Uh, I'm excited to watch the rest. The last four games, Eagles now sit at six and zero. The last four games uh, coming up, we go to to Harding Academy next week, and then uh, Cedar Creek. Well, I will tell you this. I. Uh not go to. We go to Montsell to play Harding Academy. We do, we do. Yeah. But I, I will say this: the officiating um, at some of the games over here seems to be pretty tough. But you know, when you're in a close game, which is where we were, you know, in 2018, you don't want to let the officials beat you. Well, two big missed calls, uh, uh, no calls, bad calls by the officials tonight. Fortunately. No bearing on the outcome of the game. Absolutely. Well, when it's 41-7, to yeah. they don't. Let's go down to the sideline and check in with Nick White for our final Marion State Bank sideline report. Nick, uh, I got news for you, brother. I think it's going to be a heck of a football game next week because I'm going to tell you something. Harding Academy, St. Frederick, they ain't. Yeah, and, and, and I'm excited about it because, you know, and, and we, we have some personal ties there, too, with, with a, a, a you know, a good family friend of ours that that has gone to church with us uh, and and have moved up there with, oh, with Josh. Well, Josh let me tell you Allen. something. He is a uh, he is a big big. I well, mean, he's, he's, he's also, an outstanding he, football he, player for them. He's their starting right guard, and uh, he's been described by Harding Academy's offensive line coach as the nastiest player on their O line. But and, he's a good kid. And a once. Every 10 to 15 years lineman. Ooh. Josh stands at about 6'5", 260 pounds, yeah. and can come get you. Yeah, and, and, and so, you know, we, we, we've known, you know, his family, and they, they used to live here in Monroe. And um, so I, I'm, you know, selfishly, I'm, I'm, you know, obviously I'm not rooting for Harding Academy, but I am looking forward to seeing some of our good friends that we haven't seen in quite some time next week, but uh, that's going to be a really good football game. Well, I'll tell and you what, I had a chance to catch up with uh, with Jeremy when I was yeah, up there and Rachel. Jer Jer Jeremy and Rachel Lou Allen is their parents, which, again, you know, we're, we're going to say we, we, we've known them for, for a quite, quite a few years. They said, Nick, they said, how's Washita Christian's football team? And I said, I think we're going to be really good. And she said, well, you know, we always follow y'all and we check on you. And she said, Joshua always wants to know how OCS is doing. That's all. Awesome. And she said, I cheer for you all the time, but that Friday, I'm not cheering for Washita Christian. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. And 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 look, we're we're not pulling for them next week. You no, know, we're uh, not. for 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 at least a you know whatever you know two and a half you know three hours, however long it takes. Uh, but I'm looking forward to that football game. I, I was kind of, you know, looking ahead a little bit, you know, this morning and, and today and, and just, you know, some of their stats. And, um, you know, and then, then we could talk about this football game a little bit. Uh, but, man, I, I, I am really looking forward to it. And this is where we're at, you know, at Washtenaw Christian now is, is you're having to play out-of-state opponents. And we saw it with playing Dallas Christian. Now you got to play Harding Academy, and after last week, uh, you know, scheduling games is, is going to continue to be, you know, tougher and tougher and tougher. Um, so, you know, I'm looking forward to that football game next week, uh, and, and and again, you know, we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit more next week. There's a lot of ties there between Harding and and Washtenaw Christian. Obviously, a lot of lot of kids from Washtenaw Christian go to Harding and. Obviously, Harding Academy is, is there on the campus of Harding University. But uh, I, want, I want to talk about this game for a moment. And, you know, just, just really a, a dominating performance uh, by this OCS team, you know, and, and, and got out of their element a little bit because of the weather and because of the things that, that went on out there. But still, to win, you know, 41-7 to and, and, and not really being able to throw the football tonight is still a dominant, impressive win for this football team and so uh kudos to coach Fitzhugh. kudos to this you know daniel you've been on campus this week and you know what this week means and there's probably a lot of smack talk and things like that that goes on as well uh but kudos to these players for for getting over last week and obviously everybody patting them on the back and 
You know, I even heard this morning they were still talking about the Washita football game, and, and that's been, been a week now. Uh, so kudos to this Washita Christian football team for putting that behind them and really dominating and, and taking a district victory over one of their rivals. Well, I appreciate that, Nick. That's Nick White with our Marion State Bank sideline report. And a couple things I want to mention. He mentioned the ties. Uh, I played baseball at Harding, and Shane Fullerton was my baseball coach. He's now the baseball coach at Harding Academy, which is kind of cool. Hadn't seen him since I was there. But you know what's even cooler? 400 wins for the OCS oh football program. Oh, my gosh. How did that slip by? Yeah, well, we talked about it before the game. We, we won the game. You know, it got out of hand, kind of slipped our mind. But, hey, that's win number 400, quite a milestone for any program. I know there's some programs. I, I try to look it up, you know, where we stand <coughs> in Louisiana. <coughs> Excuse me, in Louisiana all time. I couldn't find out exactly. I know there's some programs with 900 wins in the nation. I think Valdosta, Georgia has close to 900 wins. But, uh, you know, I think I think Curtis has, you know, almost 700 wins. But, you know, we got to be somewhere in the in the top, I don't know, six or seven uh, historically in, in Louisiana, something like that. But quite a milestone for this program. And uh, a lot of the success, you mentioned early on, you know, in, in the early years, uh, it struggled a little bit to find those wins. But now, well, we we did the math, and what we came up with was basically what we needed was somewhere in the neighborhood of about what well, would it average out to be was somewhere around like eight, eight wins eight, per eight season. Eight and a half wins a season. Which you know, I mean, I think most of the years we're doing a little bit better than that. But boy, I tell you what, in the early years, eight wins yeah, would have been a dream. <laughs> and by the way, yeah. in those early years, this same St. Frederick team you know, used to stomp a mud hole in Washington yeah. Christian. So. You know, my, how the tides have turned. Yep. yep. So um, I think I think that's, uh, you know, after we play next week and then go to go to Cedar Creek, uh, we finish out with two home games, which I, I really look forward to. Absolutely. Washtar Christian's going to beat St. Frederick in a big way tonight, and uh, they defeat the Warriors and will take the lead in the district. I say take the lead. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll position, position themselves to, uh, to, to make a run at this district championship. Of course, we'll have to play the Cedar Creek Cougars and, Lincoln Prep as well, but you know this is a this is a big win for Coach Fitzhugh and his staff tonight. 400 wins uh, for the Washita Christian Eagles and uh, a big win tonight here at St. Frederick. I will tell you this: if you're going to the Monticello game, I don't know how, I don't know what kind of turnout, I don't know what kind of travel we'll have, but uh, there should be plenty of seating. But I would try to get there a little bit early because uh, from what I was told, Harding Academy travels well. Yeah. So it could be a full house. So yeah. try to get there early. Looks like there's plenty of parking up there in Monticello. So uh, if uh, if you're going to make the trip, also be safe uh, as you make your way up there. Washita Christian is going to travel to Monticello High School and take on the Harding Academy Wildcats. Two undefeated football teams going to be squaring off. Uh, uh, well, I guess maybe a three, four-time state champion in the last four to five years in, the, in Harding Academy. Same thing for the Washita Christian Eagles. A lot of ties to Washita Christian at Harding, and a lot of ties from for, to Washita or from for Harding and Washita Christian. So, I tell you what, it's going to be a great football game, and wanna, I'm going to encourage you to come see it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and if you make the trip, be safe. Washita Christian defeats St. Frederick in a big way tonight. Want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight, and invite you to come back and join us next week. Which Hey, do you, think, do, you want, do you want to tell people who are still listening? Well, look, the if faithful? you're still listening, that is because you are a faithful listener. That's right. You didn't turn this game off. Washington Christian football is going to be back on the Wolf. Oh! Uh, 92-3 <laughs> next week. <laughs> Absolutely. Just submitted a deal to uh, to get back on the radio with uh, with the Wolf. and uh, Along with the live stream and the MixLR. So we're just like... Yeah, yeah like, it's, hey. it, it's the products everywhere. Yeah. But uh, a lot of demand and uh, a lot of folks that... Uh, that that wanted to let us know, hey, look, this is something we'd really like to see. And I I'm going to tip my hat to John Parker and the administration at Washtenaw Christian for School for making it happen. So next week, if you like the live stream, you're going to get the live stream. If you like, if you like, uh, if you like the, uh, the, the, uh, what, what do we what, call the MixLR? It? Yeah, the webcast. The web, yeah. If you like the webcast, tune in there. And if you like the wolf, ow, we're back on. So we look forward to uh, to tuning in there. But, uh, yeah, thanks so much for tuning in tonight. You're listening to Washita Christian Eagle Football on the Washita Christian Sports Network. <laughs>